boy, the Rocket League Championship Series is back. That's right. You're in the right place for a lot of good times and fun. Welcome to day one of the Rocket League Championship Series European Cup here in the winter split. We're moving on through. I'm Leaf, Jormy, and Spaceman here to keep that energy going, Spaceman. I know you're always up to the task of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how today goes, man. It's going to be a fun <laughs> one for sure. There's a lot on the line. Jorby, how you doing, man? It's early morning for you. How you feeling? I I'm doing, I'm doing great, man. I woke up, I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. Uh, I love I Europe. Up. Every single time <laughs> Europe comes around, it's a great time. So I, I can't wait to get started. It really is. And I, I mentioned we're, we're trudging on through. We're into that cup. That's about the halfway point. Let's take a look at the season overall in case anyone's just watching and not really knowing what's going on. We're working our way, of course, towards that world championship later on, but we got a ways to go to get there. But we are halfway through. Jorby, you said you were looking at this. You're like, oh, my God, how we we're already here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. Uh, it always feels like we just started. And then all of a sudden it's over before you realize it. We're already at the Winter Cup for Europe. And it's mm. exciting because today is when we find out where not just this region, also in South America uh, and SSA and APAC, we, we find out where those teams land as well. Uh, so it should be a great time. I think SSA is actually on North America's weekend. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is where you start figuring out like who's the head of the pack, who's going to take the lead, who, who maybe falls off. Like the second regional every time is, is the most exciting because that's when the positions really get scrambled. Yeah. And uh, as Jorby said, don't don't feel bad about getting things wrong because there's a lot of real Rocket League going on all the time. So you may as well just leave this tab open all the time. And if you want to see these teams playing at the end of this winter split, you can do that by getting your tickets on rl.gg slash winter major tickets live or type exclamation point tickets in the chat to get that link going. So you just click, you don't have to type nothing more than just tickets in chat. Just, you just click the link and just click buy your tickets. That's it. That's it. As simple as that. This is a great step process. Doing. This is wonderful. We're great chills. I like this. I, I don't. <laughs> buy your tickets. Buy your tickets. It's not more San complicated pretty than nice. that. Yeah, it's just buy your tickets, man. Come on. Weather's pretty consistent. You know, there's lots of great places. San Diego's great. Yeah. Convention Hall's really nice. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nice. nice. It's really nice. It's such a perfect name to land Diego. Like, uh, it's uh, they just get this gave that one to us. It's just, it's right there. Just get on there, okay? And hang out with everyone. Watch some Rocket League. Get your tickets. Let's talk about what's happening this weekend, though. We're gonna we're gonna jump into a bit of the format here. We start off with groups. We'll go into a bracket. We'll talk about that in a second here. But we start off with groups. These teams have to make it out of here first before they even make it to that playoff bracket on day two, Jorby. That's right. The biggest concern for every team is to don't be last. And being first is nice because you get that automatic bid top eight and a buy. Uh, outside of the first round but for mm. most of these teams the main concern is just getting out alive and at least getting a game win uh but i mean some of these groups are, are looking pretty crazy space man yeah look there's already pressure to go into the playoffs with a single elon bracket ahead but groups is difficult enough when it's already week two and everything comes down to podium finishes around the bend for a lot of these teams we're, we're kind of jostling for spots when it comes to that major qualification if you're looking at these groups leaf i mean we're going to get into uh -huh. a little bit later about what the difficulty might be for a lot of these squads but this is not going to be an easy weekend for a lot of teams looking to qualify no, uh, well, I, I, we won't get super into it, but I do want to know off the bat here, uh, we always have to create some story around a group of death. Which one are you guys looking at for, for this week? And which one's the, the group that if if you had to choose what you're in, you're not choosing that one, Jeremy? Uh, I'm not choosing group the group of Beth, uh, Beth aka group Beth. Group B. <laughs> yeah. Moist BDS and Quadrant in the same group. I mean, that's just, oh, I, I know Quadrant, you know, they didn't have the best weekend in the fall or in the winter open, excuse me. But that team, when they pop off like their peak, can absolutely catch a team like Moist or BDS off. And Moist already beat BDS 3 0 in round one in the last tournament. So, but some of these other groups also pretty sneaky. Like that group D, Oxygen, German Amigos, yep. Sonics, like that's not necessarily a gimme group for Oxygen if they sleep on either of those teams, like they slept on Sonics in the first two games last tournament. But a, a bunch of great groups, uh, Liquid Vitality in Group C, that one will be fun to see who comes out on top. G1 and yeah. K Corp in Group A. I mean, there's tons to, to look at as far as the mm. groups go. Yeah, I, I looked at them. I'm like, I don't know if I can pick one this time around. I, I really don't know because we've seen some of those teams have trouble in this first round of, of the playoffs. But yeah, if you, as Derby said, if you do make it 
uh, to the top three spots, you're not that fourth one, then you will make it into round one of the, the playoff bracket. And we will be playing that today. That will be our fourth round. So we'll get to see a little bit of that. that uh, that'll be best of fives there, Spaceman, to start that bracket off. Yeah, look, it gets more interesting the further you go on to quarterfinal semis, all then best of sevens, right? But if you mm -hmm. come out first in your groups, you get a bye. Every other team has to start their gauntlet in round one, which just sounds like a single series before. But remember, as the games continue, the competition gets better. And uh, with only one life to give at that point in the playoffs, you really don't have any room for error here. So given the fact that a lot of teams are trying to fight for points, fight for major qualifications, and the fact that this region continues to blossom from the middles, it seems that Europe is going to be a very very packed uh, show this weekend because of how many different types of talent we have both in the teams, but also uh, given the situation at hand. So this is going to be a very interesting playoff bracket for sure. Fighting for points, fighting for glory and fighting for money. $30,000 first Ooh. place. But yeah, I think for these pros right now, uh, Jorby, I think the points is the big thing because like the more points you get, the more money you have a chance to get at the end for that world championship. So points are are a huge thing, especially with how close some of these teams are. I mean, you look at BDS barely making a dent in that playoff bracket last regional. It's like th things are still a little bit open here. So I think uh, overall, if I'm looking at this, that 30K is good, Jorby, but you know, the, the, the 20 points at first is, is real good. Yeah, getting to the major feels even better, right? But for some of these teams that have been making main events, consistently qualifying through closed qualifiers, you know, going from uh, only getting about uh, $300 for your cut, jumping up to about 3000 for a top yeah. four is, is certainly a big boon for these teams, uh, you know, outside of the your, your main major competitors. So prize and points, obviously extremely valuable to a lot of teams here. Uh, but as far as the points battle goes, I think that the the list really starting to sh uh, shake things up. Like Moist sitting uh, down at eight, they need a big weekend. Quadrant need a need a comeback weekend. So do BDS. Like there, there are teams sprinkled throughout the middle of this top sixteen that you would expect to be contending for a major. They're gonna need a, a top four push, uh, or for some of them, uh, especially if you're looking at BDS, maybe even more than yeah. that, maybe a top two to help solidify things. But with the, the teams above them, with Liquid, Oxygen, Vitality, yep. even Sonics and G1, like this is a really difficult top uh, top of Europe to get to. Well, let's take a look at what match is gonna be played in this round one, maybe plowed, maybe one of these teams is just gonna crush all the other teams, but you can uh, pay attention to all these matches not just on this channel. The team streams are going on. Make sure you make your way around your uh, broadcast platform of, of choice and find your team streams that are going on and make sure to support those teams, get in the chat, cheer them on. But if you do want to stick with us here, we're going to focus in to just one of these matchups. That's the one coming in just a couple moments here, actually. Starting us off is going to be Team BDS facing off against Quadrant. On the other side, BDS, we just mentioned it, not having... Maybe the best of showings coming in that playoff bracket space man last week. It, it seems like this is a team that had always been at the top of Europe, but struggled in that first regional so far in the winter split. Yeah, look, I want to chalk it up to just kind of everybody getting back in the swing of things. Maybe that is the case, but now that conversation does essentially go out the window. And mm -hmm. I, I think the big question for both BDS and Quadrant Jorby is that not only is this week important, but we need to see that the proof of concept for these squads both still works. Maybe so more so for BDS because we've seen them have struggles to start, but then there was like a stat that came out on Twitter. It's like when they start slow, they've bounced back and had a winning percentage in the 90 percentile. This is a weekend that BDS needs to prove that this roster can still do it because we're coming up on a second major of our season and they still look like they're not figuring it out. Well, I, honestly, I feel I feel the other way. I feel like Quadrant need to prove themselves. Okay. Even watching BDS versus Moist, and it's okay, Spaceman, you know, friendly disagreement here. Uh, but I, I thought it's Juicy looked really good on Moist uh, against BDS and you know, rewatching that series between BDS and Moist in the playoffs. I, I don't think that BDS looked that bad. Uh, and, and so I, I expect them to bounce back to some degree this week. But okay. like well, I said, like it, it's tough. But I think Quadrant yeah, are, are in more of a position where they have to prove themselves because they their strength of competition in the last regional was weaker than BDS's. So Jeremy, it sounds like you're going BDS then. I'm absolutely you're going BDS. Pick, me too. Me too. 100%. I think we all are. Spaceman? Hey, I mean, I'm going on? Quad. Here's the thing. Happy to be here. It's a little I, different. Here, here's the thing. I yeah. absolutely love watching Cash win. Sure. I love it. I absolutely love it. There's, there's but, a butt coming, but here, here it comes. But what, what's going on with the quadrant here? 
Listen, I, I think that not only does Quadrant have a chance to, again, do what a lot of teams do on Thursdays and Fridays of events where it's like, hey, we get an upset. This would be an upset for Quadrant, but I also think they've looked better with their shot percentage as of late. They also yeah. have one of the highest shot percentages behind Carmine Court in the entire region, and that spells a lot for their offense. They get better as the series goes on. Okay. I don't see enough out of BDS to confidently say for me that they're going to take this series home, and I think Quadrant's hey. getting better as they play. A little bit of doubt, it seems, from chat to only 66% in favor of BDS, so maybe Quadrant can have this, but uh, I'm still with them. Uh, I'm with you, Jordan. Well, we do get underway, and uh, somebody that everyone is familiar with on this BDS squad, Monkey Moon, despite them going out early, still near the top. In fact, uh, number four in score per game uh, during the Winter Open. But Monkey Moon was still producing consistently in the last tournament. And if he's producing, you know the BDS always have a chance. But yeah. it's not to write off this Quadrant squad, even though they lost a tight five-game series to Sonics last week. They made the major for a reason. This team has a pretty high peak if they can find it. And it's also worth rem remembering that both these teams bowed out in round one last week in playoffs. So again, there's a lot to say for how this entire series will play out, a lot for how this weekend should go for both squads. When it comes down to the tactile for both these teams, Dorby, we've talked about a little bit in the pregame. Quadrant, you're looking at them to step things up for BDS. Is it a consistency factor? Is it we're looking for Monkey Moon to be the catalyst? What are you seeing out of BDS that has not been the same since the World Championship? You also got to see, I mean, Seiko kind of take that front role or that, that starring role that he has at times. But look, Monkey Moon, he's always shining. I mean, this is a beautiful pass. Gets the pop up. Great turn and great push on the reset. What execution from Monkey Moon on that play, and that was that was pretty. I mean, ask and you shall get Monkey Moon. There he is once again. BDS finding themselves on the board first. A couple interesting tidbits to go into this series, right? BDS staying as one of the better shooting teams in the region percentage-wise, but when it comes to converting those into goals, we're still looking for them to get back to that high-powered offense they had to end last year. The demos have certainly been theirs as well. Loving to get physical on those back corners, stealing boost. It's BDS's game throughout, but the fundamentals have been crucial for their success, even as limited as it might be so far this season, as they continue that with Seiko rotating back into the play. But Cash, one of the standouts. You've had a lot of experience with him, Jorby. What does he bring to a squad that maybe gets overlooked by a lot of other players? Oh, Cash, he has the flash factor to him. If he can get behind the ball and his mechanics are, are looking good, it, he can beat almost anybody else on the pitch in Europe. I think the issue comes is when do we see that cash? Because right now, I mean, in the last tournament, nobody really sitting high offensively for a quadrant. Everyone sitting pretty low on it. You got Ixo, uh, who's at the top of that goals per game list, but he's eighth. He was eighth in the tournament, cash at 11th. Mm. And you'd like to see cash up that list a little bit more. Ixo, a really solid player. Yeah. But, you know, Ka Cash is kind of your, he's your X factor for Quadrant, and it, he needs to find production to build that confidence. Because if he doesn't have it, we've seen Cash uh, when he isn't confident, and it is a massive difference between the two. I mean, this is not only just a fun team to watch in Quadrant, but Ixo has really come into his own, I feel like, in the past season. He has been a little bit more consistent with his decision making. His cerebral play has been there for sure. And yet again, BDS will try to challenge at the midfield. But it seems to have been possession upfield on these counterattacks momentarily as Quadrant have been looking for those infield passes, just haven't been able to find anything that connects. BDS more than happy to continue to poke the ball free and essentially transition into these long touches to Seiko or Monkey Moon in the corners where they're still fighting for control and that midfield's all blue for the moment. Really hasn't been much Quadrant can find. Only one shot on that for Quadrant. It's nothing for him. Ixo trying to find a 50. Even that relating wave just kind of pitches the ball right back to Monkey Moon and doesn't get the read in midfield. He had plenty of boosts. He could have found another option instead of handing the ball right back to Monkey Moon. Extra diving in front. Couldn't quite find relating wave. Been a comfortable one nothing lead for BDS so far. Yeah, there's no need to panic here for Quadrant, but BDS continuing to do what they did off the opening goal, right? Throw a shot towards the center of the box, let someone get physical, fly in front, Seiko and Monkey Moon commit for the save, and it's good enough to find the counterattack back out. Extra, we'll meet it. And the parry back to the midfield, but uh, I think Monkey Moon maybe didn't oh. expect that touch to go the way that it did, and you'll capitalize as Relating Wave equalizes quickly. Yeah, Quadrant breakthrough on this one, and Monkey Moon was absolutely not expecting that ball to just come for free. From Ixo, he was expecting a 50. Maybe that punches straight up. Monkey Moon 
Not in a bad spot from where he was seeing the pitch, but a non-touch leads to a goal and Quadrant just like that tied Ooh. up. It's a great kickoff win, but a little bit too wide on the swing. And we've seen extra time and time again be kind of the steady back line for BDS when it comes to getting those rebounds, recovering in midfield, and yet again, orchestrating the offense back up. As yet, it seems that when it starts off in game one, BDS kind of a coin flip for them. They're usually either on target or finding early shots, early goals. But after that, they sometimes struggle. We see them get back into the rhythm as the series goes on. Of course, looking to last week when they got that game five win in massive fashion over Oxygen. It was a big boost, but it still fell in the playoffs for Quadrant. A lot to be desired for the squad. A high ceiling, high floor as well. As Cash, a bit of boost to burn. All of his teammates get sent back to respawn. Now trying to 1v3 with nowhere to go. Did all he could. It was looking like a tight spot for a second. Quadrant do hang on to this ball, but then BDS blow right through it. Monkey Moon sending it high, making it awkward for Wave. He can't make the grab. Ixo can't make it either. Extra wanted a pass out off the rebound, but both Monkey Moon and Seiko were playing off the ball pretty far. Retaining the midfield. Can they get one at the end of regulation? Extra denied. As Cash gets in front, we go to OT. You have to challenge that if you're Quadrant, and they do, but BDS, we've seen them in OT before. Can they do it again? For Quadrant, they started to find their rhythm as this game has gone on, holding on to more possessions, but that is a very dangerous open side of the field. And we'll try to recover nicely. Punched out, extra, sending it right back. Possession for BDS, back, Quadrant, taking it. Cash through the corner. In front of the box. Oh. Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> I am shocked and appalled. <laughs> How does this happen? <laughs> well, it happens because Cash puts a hard one up. Monkey Moon is rotating into the play and Extra is thinking, I'm going to catch that ball and move it down the center of the field because Cash kind of gives it up, right? And, and you're hoping your follow-up guy can get there. Monkey Moon decided to play second man for Quadrant and help out a little bit. And I got to say, uh, that is an awesome is it a Mickey goal or dribble. are we happy it happened? I think we're awesome. happy it happened. We started last, the last European regional, I think started with an own goal. And we ended game one with an own goal. That was excellent. That'll wake everybody up. Leaf, how you feeling? It was a sick dribble. I, uh, Monkey Moon almost made it look like he didn't want to score that. Like that. That's how great. <laughs> you got to give him credit. He. Did. I don't think he did. Yeah. He yeah. really made it. He really sold that one. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. That's not the way you want. I mean, you hold the match the whole time as BDS, and then it, it, it ends up doing overtime, and then that happens. That's not the start you will want as BDS. That's for sure. If you're if you're trying to instill confidence, I saw some fans in chat being like. All right, this is the BDS we want. Let's go. That's not the BDS uh, that you want, but uh, it's the cash you want. It's the it's the quadrant you want. Taking a dub there across the board, though. Honestly, this this will probably be the most exciting. We're seeing basically everything as expected. K Corp takes theirs. Uh, G One takes a, a win in theirs. Uh, Tundra does get one over Moist though in game one. Um, and then, uh, but then you have Team Liquid getting their win. You got Vitality getting their win. Oxygen getting their win. I will say Sonic's taking a win over German Amigos. Uh, mm. might, might make that a good series too. That's the group for me, Jorby, uh, looking at German Amigos and how they've kind of not shocked the world, but they've certainly put people on notice. And I'm excited to see how that squad does this weekend. Uh, very, very interesting group of deaths for kind of a lot of different teams and their looks this weekend. This is a, a stacked regional too. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Tundra getting game one on Moist. I don't think Tundra have really mm -hmm. shown much, but no. that one, definitely something to, to keep tabs on. We'll see. Uh, for BDS, though, in this match, game one, look, it, it gets away from, you know, a slight miscommunication between Extra and Monkey Moon on how they wanted to uh, how they wanted to clear the ball. But that one mistake that probably won't be enough to write BDS off here is Quadrant. Really, both of their goals are one off of a positional, I would say, an unfortunate positional mm -hmm. for almost a forced error because of the non-touch on the challenge. And then that last one as well, Seiko. 15 out by relating wave, but a double commit from Ixo as Monkey Moon gets around one. Extra gets a bump on another. Cash out of the play. Ixo comes in, able to get it right back to relating wave as Extra puts it up in high. Relating wave has no boost on the wall. Monkey Moon underneath has the grab. Relating wave staying on top of it. A couple of crucial touches for Wave on this defensive stop, but more is coming. Seiko, one touch, two! BDS on the board. I mean, Wave had no boost for about a minute and a half here. Still just trying to fight for his life, but it's that low clear that Seiko takes right back and punishes. That's the BDS you're used to, that overwhelming pressure. 
Now, I was going to talk about maybe the victim of circumstance spot for BDS, where it just seemed like throughout most of game one, they were double committing a lot of times. Granted, the saves were coming through, but Jorby, it seems they're maybe not as confident as they normally are. However, on the offensive side of the ball, they looked very, very good, and they yet again start off a game one nothing. Uh, pinpointing Ixo on, on the defense. A couple of double commits, and then a poor clear attempt. A couple of decision, decision moments for Ixo that could have gotten Quadrant out on that push. We'll see how Quadrant can progress now as Cash decides to take it himself. Oh, and a my. big dunk! Oh, oh, ho, ho. Now that's money! Ooh. Sniffing the stratosphere. Let him know! Saucy little salamander, get up there! What do you find it? A dunk, a win, a tie game. My goodness, and that always read. That was, what a, what, uh, you know, you see him go up for that and you think, okay, he's gonna get 50 out of that one easily, but that I'm Dominus is sneaky, man. That he's Dominus will win some crazy, uh, some really odd 50s. And now Cash has to make another stop. Extra. Next up on the carry. What is happening? Okay, well, there was a dunk in front and now a clear. It's like we get the ball right back for BDS and we're just gonna dunk it back on top of you. And there they oh. go. Right downfield, no time, no expense, extra 2-1. Oh, so Monkey puts this high on the corner, Wave jumps for it, Cash is expecting Wave to have a play on the ball. Now he's got to turn tail and run, and I don't think he really sees extra as he turns around, because he's watching Wave, and he immediately has to turn back, make, a, uh, make an attempt at a save, and the pass is already over his head. Cash, last minute adjust, or last second adjustment, couldn't make it happen. Eek's no big demo, and he equalizes quickly here for Quadrant. That's a nice assist from Relating Way, but escapes the bump off kickoff. Sidewall's all mine, and Ixo just floats it through with a great demo in the air. Really nothing that BDS could do. They read it perfectly. Ixo just had a better idea. Back and forth oh, we go. Redemption there for him as well. He felt like he was struggling on defense a little earlier when BDS were building more pressure. Maybe that is something that BDS can continue to pick on. They get down to the orange half. Seiko wins another touch. Any boost left for him, and Ixo's left with the ball against Extra. He deletes him out of the play. I wish I could say there's been a midfield presence really for both sides. It seems the BDS have usually had two up at a time, but off the kickoff, both teams have had their fair share of looks. Monkey Moon can try to clear it away. Ixo playing this one on ISO ball, can't get the second touch. Cash will cut it down. Ixo finds a demo. Anybody else going to follow up for Quadrant? Relating Wave comes in late, and there's Ixo ready for the rebound. Right on target, Ixo puts it away. Beautifully played by Quadrant. Good move from Ixo. He picked up the demo initially. No boost spawns for him, but it's no problem. Relating Wave wins the bout against Monkey Moon. Ixo sat and waited, seeing that there was no chance for anything poor to happen in the rotation. Stuck around. Rewarded with a shot and a goal. Quadrant. A really quick turnaround off of two solo efforts. First from Cash, and then Ixo, and now a bit of team play. Oh. As they get oh. downfield, and Cash puts in another one, BDS! All of a sudden, it just turns into the shooting lane. This is 4D chess. I mean, Ixo waits patiently for Extra to come back up, goes for the demo, Extra flies out of the play, Cash is at midfield for the pass, catches it, sends it back on its way. They're letting Ixo be a nuisance, and Quadrant are more than happy to put that pressure on if they have two up at once. This is beautiful Rocket League out of Quadrant and combining on the save. It's dangerous for the moment. Monkey Moon trying to put it away. BDS still applying the pressure. Almost from the elbow. Monkey Moon can't backflip, but I like the play from BDS regardless. Quadrant dipping, dipping deep into their playbook against BDS in game two. Yeah, they needed the elbow to connect with the fist there and just couldn't make it work. Uh, they were giving them a slight error from between Ixo and Relating Wave. Ixo had that initial save. Relating Wave got the 50, but almost own gold on top of it. Oh, and Cash! Oh, what? what? Okay, Relating Wave is there. We're good. Breathe. <laughs> we're good. Well, this has been a bit of a clinic. I mean, that 50 is just stupid. That save is dumb. That 50 is also and, stupid. <laughs> and Relating Wave finishing is just about appropriate. That's, that save is absolutely absurd. Oh, God. This one getting away from BDS. And it happened really quickly, too. What is, yeah, what is I'd that? say like, so. That's like, like three goals in almost like, I think less than 40 seconds. Yeah, okay, we traded about 1-1, one, 2-2 one, two, two for a couple of kickoffs, and then all of a sudden, Quadrant decided to go absolutely demon time. Has it been the cleanest game from Quadrant either on defense? They just oh. haven't really... Like BDS have okay, nine shots on net, but... Well, there's one that goes downfield and easily taken away. It started nicely with a couple of passes from BDS. 
But then everything just kept going wrong on these big clears, caches, Ixo solo plays, Ixo picking up the demos. Yeah. And that really just feels like it sealed the deal in Forbidden Temple. I mean, look at Monkey Moon, right? Like, he does have four shots granted, but three saves to his name, less than about 500 points. It seems that BDS has just been spending so much time just to corral possession back. They've struggled to orchestrate anything up the field. Cash with the reset. High on the bar, but still saved. Now, how do BDS get the ball back out? If they can at all. Sago trying to keep it on the ground. The challenges continue. Quadrant not letting up. Extra misses the touch, but maybe just gives it to Sago, and he swings wide off the wow. bar. Monkey Moon follows. There's the finish. 11 seconds to go. Is it enough? Probably not, but at least you get one. It's 5-3. BDS trying. Yeah, effectively in garbage time. Seiko, he knew he had to contest Wave in front of the net. And so tried to shoot it to the back corner. You still expect Seiko to put those on target, but not going to harp too hard about it at the end of the game. Unless they somehow pick one up with time left. And Monkey Moon has the speed. But they don't have the time. Ixo knew it and they'll put it on the ground. And all of a sudden, a lot of people think a BDS should square this one away and come back, but it's Quadrant who are stepping up. And Spaceman, you said at the beginning that you felt like BDS were the one, you felt more that they were the ones who needed to prove themselves and that Quadrant just get better over time. Yeah. Well, I mean, so far, Quadrant in group stage, two up on BDS. You know, I think that, I, I think my prediction's great, awesome for me, but I also am just looking at how this game two played out, Jorby. And it was very much similar defenses from both sides, where when Quadrant had possession, they were overwhelming. BDS really didn't have an answer. When BDS were on the other side of the field and they had the ball, they were overwhelming. Quadrant looked faulty on defense. Both these teams looked essentially similar. It just seemed that more often than not, possession was there for Quadrant. They were able to put it away. Even in the end, BDS with 11 seconds still looked like they were primed for a goal. I don't really know what's going on in, these, in this game. It just seems that neither teams are really able to figure each other out, but Quadrant's putting the ball away. Lots of uh, lots of potential 3-0s on the board actually right now. Uh, K Corp, understandably. G1, understandably about to get their sweep. Uh, we have this one here. Then you got Team Liquid, who's looking at getting a sweep for themselves. Vitality, looking to get a sweep over Williams Resolve themselves. Oxygen, looking to get a sweep over Endpoint. And this one, uh, the most surprising, uh, Sonics. Potentially, if I'm not mistaken, about the perfect sweep German Amigos. Wow. I think uh, I think if I'm looking at it right, yeah, they're wow. both here. So that that one's surprising. But almost every single match is a 3-0 right now, potentially. Well, we know how Europe is. That could all change. We might end up with all game fives at the end of this. I've seen it too many times to believe it can't happen. Monkey Moon got the catch, got the flick, got the goal. That's how you start game three. Who needs boost when you're Monkey Moon? And who needs boost when you got extra just serving it off the backboard and the double commit that clears lane? Ixo's not going to win this one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe once out of a thousand times, but Monkey Moon too good in the closing stages. one nothing again. Every single game so far this series, BDS have scored first and scored early. Can they hold on to the lead? That's been the question. Monkey Moon brings it down. Quick pass broken up. Quadrant. I've had some great breakouts on the transition. Let's see if that continues to be successful for them. Just content to just launch that downfield. Extra, trying to protect the ball, ended up having to give it up. Monkey Moon was also following closely there. The Quadrant will retain possession off of that. But where are they going with the ball? Just kind of lobbing it up. Now they've double committed. Cash was up for it early. And everyone's flat on BDS. Somebody calls off someone at the right moment there. You might have a good play, but a double commit really just killed any chance you had on that offensive push. Now Monkey Moon lobs it up to Seiko. Seiko makes it difficult, but Relating Wave stays right with it. An extra freezing Ixo on the wall. Ixo with no boost, but he makes the grab against Monkey Moon. And Seiko just chasing the ball gave extra enough time to grab boost when he came off respawn and get back up to midfield to keep that pressure alive. So it's just nice teamwork out of BDS to start, even if they're not finding a lot of success. Seiko tried to continue, but very quickly Ixo denies. Gets it back out to the third. Cash trying to clear the ball. Quadrant trying to hunt for those demos, but BDS get it as well. And Monkey Moon with oh. maybe a, a leave off. He'll give it to Seiko, who can't find the shot. He just didn't have a lot of boosts. You, you drop that ball off, you likely center it. Mm -hmm. Quadrant. Tactical decision. That's a good grab from extra as well. Quadrant withstood one BDS drive. Pass in front, but right into Seiko. Trying to find a way in. 
high touch. Ixo decides to go low on his 50. This pushes it away from Monkey Moon. Now Relating Wave wins. Cash decides against it, and Relating Wave gets a free rebound and a free goal. Yeah, you got the better look on this one. There's really no need for all the way downfield, anybody else to finish this other than Relating Wave. And he just flies through the gap, beats the defender to his own ball. And we are waiting for Quadrant to respond, but BDS looking a little bit better with their consistent offense in this game three, a very necessary one. They're down 2-0 if you're just joining us. It's been an interesting series, but a quick response from Quadrant like we've seen so far in this entire best of five. Dude, Quadrant they keep going. Just, mm. they're, they're just lobbing the ball, not even lobbing. They're just hitting power shots. Yeah. Over to BDS. I mean, even BDS looking back to like what Ixo did to Relating Wave, just power shot into the net. And, and if you're lucky enough to get the rebound, you're lucky enough to get it. Yeah, I mean, it, it like, and they keep, like, they keep finding it. And BDS, usually so good at finding each other, and they're still working towards it. Like, they're looking for each other in space. But Quadrant have their finger on the pulse of how BDS are trying to play. And they're playing their own game. They're happy to smack that ball because BDS are just they're smacking it right back. And who's who's won the bout when it just comes to the hard touch rebound game? It's been Quadrant here. Wow. Here comes Cash, who couldn't slot it. Rebound, he grabbed the ball, but nobody can go for Quadrant. Oh, that's one you're going to want back for Quadrant. That's essentially a free goal there. Zixo tried to float his way through very quietly. Cash off the ceiling, holds the reset, tried to drop it in front. I like the call, but just couldn't get it to Ixo in time. As Quadrant are starting to make some adjustments against BDS on that offensive third, and now back out for possession. The boys in blue flipping it off oh. the top bar. Seiko comes through with a powerful punch and closes the deal for the lead. Finally, BDS get back in, and Quadrant get broken through. Cash was a little far off a of Monkey Moon who got incredible power to get over Cash on that play. Monkey Moon sets that one up. I mean, Quadrant, they, they played a really great game. They've limited BDS's chances so far in this game. That was only their third shot. Yeah. But, I mean, the, you can't argue with the efficiency. Relating Wave might have had something, but Seiko was right on top of it. I mean, look at back to game two where you had a chance to put BDS away and Quadrant did that. That's kind of how you have to play this team once you make those adjustments. If you're going to find goals or opportunities to put BDS out of reach, you got to do it because they will come back on you very, very quickly. Ixo couldn't continue. Cash misses, played it low, was looking for the 50. Monkey Moon got it over top. I think so just he was looking laterally. Cash actually in a decent spot to keep this. What can he do though? Extra's already in the air. Forced him low. BDS get another full field clear, but Ixo gets a massive 50. <gasps> Cash leaves it, and we got a tie game. Another full field bomb. He right, lands into BDS's net. He redirects this. Oh my, Cash. Oh. Oh, wow. yes. Yes, Cash. I don't know why I'm excited, but this is fun. 2-2, uh, a minute <laughs> one to go. Oh my goodness. Yes, What Cash. a redirect. Yes, Cash. <laughs> this is why we wake up early, Cash. <laughs> Great Rocket League. I really don't even. Know, I really don't even know if that changed the trajectory that much. I mean, that was so slight. It probably. Hey, listen, listen. All right, if he gets credit, I'm calling it. Okay, it's just uh, it's no, great Rocket sure. League. For sure. <laughs> Extra up high. Extra steps it up, and Monkey Moon off the post. Take a way back, but he gets the shot, and Eagles destroyed. No boost, and BDS take the lead. Right back, extra, continuing to find opportunities. Monkey Moon plays it right post. It was a shot, but the rebound from Seiko. The defense is spread thin. There's not a lot of boost. You just got to put something towards the net. Can never count them out. BDS yet again, fight tooth and nail all the way back. They find the lead with about 30 to play. Can they stop the bombs dropping on their half? There's one. There's two. Relating wave against extra. He's won, and he's so denied by Seiko on the respawn. They're gonna let Monkey Moon come in, but Quadrant, quick pass. The shot denied, all three from BDS commit. Cash has to work his way around quick, and they still have to work for this game tying goal, but they can't get to the ball in time. Relating Wave tried to get up for the third, but Extra beats him, and Cash trying to keep control, launches it in front. Monkey Moon's got him cut off, and at the end of the game, BDS are still in play. Cash, get it on the ground, maybe, not yet. And that one finally touches the ground. PDS will not get sweaty. It got close in the very end, but you got to give credit where credit is due, and rightfully so. BDS did not stop fighting for that entire game. Quadrant had a couple of opportunities, but the defense in the end, in that final moment for BDS, really stood up. They weren't letting Quadrant get those powerful shots towards the front of the net. They were taking possessions away on the sidewall. They were forcing the ball right up midfield. 
And uh, you got to look at how those adjustments came through. It really seemed like Quadrant had BDS's number when the, the chips got down, but BDS never faulted and really got to credit extra on Monkey Moon for setting up a lot of these different looks on offense. They go in a position to, to finish two times, but it came down to really Monkey Moon and extra working together in tandem upfield. We have some of our sweeps, in case you guys care. You didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Uh, we have some of our sweeps complete here. Carmine Corp get their three over Saw. G1, three over Solary. Uh, Team Liquid completes their three over Much Delight. Sonics, a 3-0 over top of German Amigos, and it was not a perfect sweep. German Amigos did score one, so we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't get our perfect sweep there. But we do have a bit of a bite back. Um, Tundra and Moist Esports, they're really close games. A couple overtimes for them. Uh, that's going in, in game four right now. So if you want to get serious, remember, team streams are going on across the board. Have those open and cheer on your favorite teams. Well, Quadrant, again, we'll try Ooh. to end this one with a pass and a bump and a cash goal. 12 seconds is all it takes. So we like to call the enforcer out on the field, knocking people off left and right. Gets enough of a scrape on Monkey Moon to take him off his way and Cash finishes. So, changing the dynamic here in the first three games, it was BDS finding the opening goal. Quadrant put themselves on the board early. It's about 12 seconds burned because math is mathing. And very quickly, Quadrant have themselves a lead. Again, it's physical play for Quadrant. That, that has been integral. Or not integral, essential. I think is the proper word I'm looking for. Both work. And take and scoring against this BDS squad. Mm -hmm. So BDS have let one or two in on their own, but most of these efforts are quadrant breaking through, quadrant outplaying BDS in the one on one. Uh, and they haven't been as successful. BDS haven't been as successful in the 50 game. Cash, one on one with Seiko, and he wins it. That's two for Cash. Yeah, there's really no shot here. I mean, once you have free space like this, it's free real estate. Like, where else are you going to go? What could you possibly hope for other than a reset to the opposite side? And you get it with the open net, Monkey Moon tried, but that is a 2 0 lead, like you said, Quadrant. Very quickly building upon BDS. Yeah, he flipped that one over pretty quick. Cash downfield. And he's done that a lot of times. Back when he was on Misfit with Arju and Matane, Cash would ha just have games like this where it doesn't seem like he can really do much wrong with the mechanics. Sometimes, sometimes the Dominus is just working. Sometimes Quadrant are just working. That's a lot more pressure. Monkey Moon had to come across the rotation. Now he gets a hard pass to Extra. Get the ball killed in the corner. Ixo, let the touch get away from him. Monkey Moon, what can he do with it? Drop pass cut off by Relating Wave quickly there in the third. Quadrant in a tight rotation here on defense. And a couple of touches to keep mm -hmm. BDS at bay, but that's the farthest they're able to push them back. Relating Wave, good delayed dodge, and Ixo wins over two. Now he's got to beat Seiko. What's the bump? He got him! <laughs> See you later! Three nothing! Oh, man. How do you break out of zone defense? Uh, you just kind of escape a demo, throw it up in the front of the net, and uh, go hunting. Go find something. Go fishing. You can catch bait with bait, or you can throw a stick of dynamite in the water, and that's exactly what Ixo just did. You get, like, 10 trout if you do that. But I think I think you, you get the whole ocean trout. floor if you do that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Change the coral. They say the ocean is a forest, and uh, that's that's right. Right. the wood clearing after that one for sure, but... Here's Cash again. Ixo demoing extra. Oh, that's gotta be frustrating if you're BDS, even when you're getting the clear, even when you feel like you're finally getting some control. Someone takes you out. And that just does a little bit, like it's a little chip downfield, just like Cash gets this little chip over to Ixo, who can't stop deleting people. Wave across and not on target. Seiko was in the area. Now Seiko makes a couple of nice moves. BDS starts to come back. Dang. Extra gets underneath and scores. BDS, two to go. We can't count them out. I'll say it every single time they start scoring. Seiko begins the play, falls through, creates space, extra finishes. And I was wondering when the physicality of midfield will start to come back in transitions for BDS. Because they had a lot of demos in games one and two. Game three, a little bit different. They started to get more comfortable, but it really seems like that demo play that helped them create those infield passes, those long lateral movements has been gone. We see it a little bit there, but the transition's strong for BDS. They just got to get back out with possession. Monkey Man will try to do so as he clears out. Seiko upfield, extra. The island for the moment. Can't get it away. Pressure continues. Quadrant, one at a time, challenging these possessions. Oh, ball back in midfield. Extra, looking for Monkey Moon again, but BDS 
Tall task ahead of them. Monkey Moon. Oh, he almost pulled the cash off there. He didn't get he didn't get the shot. Didn't make contact, but he was close. God, he did. Very well, might have snuck his way into the net. Now he gets another 50, but extra. Shots just aren't there. The quality for BDS is just not there. Quadrant up again. And they got space with cash. Even kills the ball. BDS extra chasing the ball down with no boost. Seiko can't get there. Relating wave going to push it back out to the side. That's a very necessary clear towards the back wall. It again forces BDS to have to burn boost to get up to meet the challenge. Monkey Moon's been there twice. But all the midfield. Boost game there. Eekso with a full tank. Can't get it around. Starting to see the pressure mount and putting a lot of applied force two at a time up. BDS looking for more and more chances through those gaps. They just haven't been able to find much, but they got to keep this going for a chance at a second goal. They keep losing that first 50 out of midfield. Look, even right there. Eekso shakes extra off the ball. Cash did so earlier. They, every time they lob this up, look, orange car. There, there hasn't been a blue to blue transaction in a while here. Seiko pushes the ball out, and then he gets chipped out of the play. Monkey Moon, get, I mean, look at this. They're literally one step ahead of BDS here. BDS are trying to move, but Quadrant have locked the chains down on them. Now relating wave in front. Ixo goes for the soft touch, one to beat. Two had the slight bounce, but couldn't get contact. Was challenged out by extra anyway. Now Quadrant are just they're, they're playing with their time just fine with 30 seconds left. And these waning moments, if you're Quadrant, you're gonna continue just to thread this ball in the front of the net. You're gonna try to find your teammates. You're gonna keep the pressure up. You don't want to give BDS space to breathe here as they do just that and how quickly the counterattack begins. Not a lot of the tank, but extra sets this one up, gets it through the corner and Monkey Moon is ready and waiting patiently for his shot and puts it far post. You know, uh, where Lady Wave gets demoed on the play. So Cash is pretty far off the ball. He's next up and he comes forward to extra. And I think he wanted to demo extra because he ends up not jumping at the ball. Extra saw Cash coming, and as he veered behind the ball, that's when Extra decided to flick. And he beat him. Ixo, I mean, there was a perfect bounce off the ramp from uh, from the flick from Extra. And like he was just frozen. There was nothing he could do. But BDS are out of time. Monkey Moon, quick pass, no time. One more on the bounce. Extra, does he have it? Leaves it. Monkey Moon, one, two, goal! Zero seconds and BDS are done! You can't count them out. Stop giving them this free possession. Top bar, everybody gets involved, but Monkey Moon puts it away. The slot, the finish, overtime again. BDS find a way. Wow, 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 wow. Quadrant had full control, three goals. And now BDS put up three unanswered. Uh -oh. At the very end of the game, Seiko goes for the quick clear. Do they have them downloaded? Extra. Underneath. No touch. Monkey Moon shot. <gasps> Denied by Relating Wave. Seiko's got to stay flat and turn tail because the ball right back to his wall. Now Seiko taking his time as BDS look for a way out. I mean, Extra is sneaking around the backboard, coming right down onto the plane, taking defenders out. Quadrants to start sweating a little bit with how quickly BDS have made these adjustments. It's a 1v2 for Cash. And he gets oh. it around one. It's going to float. Not enough, though. Extra clears it. Relating Wave. Cutting it down, Quadrant keeping possession. Wow! What a 50! Relating wave on Coliseum puts BDS out of reach. Quadrant won most of those challenges, but it was a dunking contest, and BDS got dunked out of the stadium. Handed their first series loss of the day. Quadrant hang on in four. That was Dunk City. This was a series. This was a whole series. I, I don't even know what that means, but this leaf, this was, yeah. this was a whole series, man. This, uh, you're correct. <laughs> run with we that. We did finish the series. Yeah, we did play the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it definitely felt like uh, BDS was was struggling uh, a lot here. That was a fantastic tying goal at zero seconds, though. I love to see it, but that hurts to then lose it with a dunk like that right after there. And uh, that was the second to last match. We do have one more going on right now. Williams Resolve, Team Vitality. All our other matches are done. A uh, lot of stomps here, but this one for Williams Resolve is actually a potential reverse sweep. So Williams Resolve is trying to take it back from Vitality. So it's gotta be exciting. Let's take a, let's take a listen what's going on down on the field. 
has been building is finally getting to them, but we still need to make saves anyways. Flame, again, defensive masterclass, but unfortunately, the follow-up, an offensive masterclass. That is a ripper on target. Can't can't really do much about that. And I mean, like, this this is the threat that is Vitality, right? It doesn't matter how dominant their opposition is. It doesn't matter. Okay, if their boost totals are low, all that means is it's going to be a bit more difficult. They still have goals in them. Again, we just cannot get complacent. We can get excited. We can get hyped up. We can get incredibly happy with the way our team are playing and the players can do this as well but they need to remember that they are playing three incredibly offensively talented oh. players and they need to be aware of that they are we don't need to tell them that that goal will have been another bit of a wake-up call for them and they won't take the foot off the gas they'll just you know put Potentially have that in the back of their mind that yeah okay that's right we are playing radisson sizen and alpha 54. Oh, but no one doesn't seem to care. He puts a shot on target. I will say, as much as we need to remember that, also keep up with these challenges out at midfield. Again, don't try and get complacent. Don't try and start slowing down just because the pressure is getting to you. Keep these challenges up. Keep this team awkward. The biggest thing that Vitality have struggled with is our midfield presence that has not allowed them any clean transitions since probably the second game. They still do find shots here or there, but again, boost totals are better. Transitions downfield out of us in particular are better, and saves on the line like that are becoming commonplace. We just need to get this off the half, though. My goodness, are we in an awkward position. A good doink downfield, though. Could get this one out to Breezy. He gets it to the backboard. But Sizen, a good clear out towards midfield. And with 40 seconds to go, again, keep the challenges up. Keep the egos oh. on high, but do not give up a goal. WR, you are half a minute away from the reverse sweep. And Noah doing it at all off the oh. ceiling. The musty again, somewhat lacking. But he had come all the way from his own goal line. Took that ball all the way across it, as you mentioned the word ego. And that's something that this lad has oodles of. Of, and not in the bad way. Look at this. Mm -mm. He's just taking seconds off oh the my. clock. He's draining it dry. And Flame is going to drain a third goal for Williams Resolve. 12 seconds remaining. Team Vitality still have hope, but it's the barest glimmer. Williams Resolve have been the better team in this last three games. And to give it up at this point, it'd have to be something miraculous. So, to all of our friends on the main Rocket League channel right now, hello, welcome to WR. Hey. We do not give up. Show your resolve, Amato. We have gone past the entire season, and today we show it yet again. Three to one, the final score of game number five oh, as WR well, again went for the road. Thank you to <laughs> d to all of Vitality and bye bye Vitality. Bye Reverse bye. sweep complete. Bye bye, bye bye Vitality. That is the truth. Reverse sweep complete. <laughs> bye bye, Vitality. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's huge for Resolve, Jorby. That uh, uh, to because Vitality came in, especially last regional, looking hot. Uh, so for Williams Resolve to reverse sweep them is pretty mm. big. Yeah, I mean that is that, that's a really good result for uh, mm -hmm. Williams Resolve, and not one I expect. Uh, not, not one I think many people expected after what Vitality did last tournament. Lots of more fun Rocket League to come your way. Remember, we got the team streams on, so go support all your favorite uh, teams. We're going to stick with, it seems, BDS coming to the next one to see if their journey can turn around as they face off against Moist Esports after the break.
Sends one to the backboard. Tries to send one to the back of the net. And he will triple touch. You said the double might work out. How about a triple? Oh, oh my. my. This time. Within the team, we, we're always speaking, we're always, you know, spending time with each other and just making sure we're all excited and good to go for the regionals. And also just making sure, we, you know, we're doing all right in our outside lives because that also is important, just especially for mentality, just, you know, making sure we're all on the same headspace, on the same, like, idea of what we want to do and just make sure we're all happy and ready to play. So in general, you know, when our team's having bad phases or, you know, scrims aren't going as well as we, we expect them to be going, we just sit down together, have a chat, try and speak through the issues, get everything off our chest, you know, because that's very important in a team environment and just making sure we all get back on the same page and just to know that, you know, these scrim results don't matter. Um, all that matters is that we're, you know, we're doing what we're practicing and we're doing it right. And yeah, just, just making sure we keep in touch. There's a good example in Regional 1 of the first split. Um, we played against Solary. We were 2-2 in the Swiss and we were 2 or down in the series. And we had a little team talk just between the game because obviously, you know, it's match point and this series is to make top eight. And we just made sure everyone knew, you know, we are better than them. We can beat these guys. We know we can. We have just got to keep calm and composed and confident. Shot is on target. Very big yeah, get there. Reverse sweep, the second on the day. Quadrant are moving on. So my advice for up and coming players that, you know, especially need to work on their mentality would be, you know, even if you're queuing ranked, don't get frustrated, don't quick chat. You know, it's just a game. It doesn't matter on the result. And, you know, always try to stay happy because you're always going to play the best when you're at your happiest. Marked for the longest time. And <laughs> there is the example, a gallery of goals for cash.
you. You came back. I'm really glad you did because we have a lot more Rocket League that you're really going to enjoy. I can guarantee you. I'm Leap. Jarby and Spaceman decided to stick around for another match. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some, some more stuff here. Let's 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 look at the the results so far, Spaceman. Because uh, yeah, let's do it uh, again. I, we had a, a couple stomps across the board, but those, in my opinion, were expected. Maybe not though. The Sonics 3-0. And then, of course, that that reverse sweep for Williams. Only one game five, which is usually a, a normal sign so far in the day one stuff. But yeah, I think the biggest surprise, of course, being that German Amigos get 3 0 by Sonics. Carmine Corp handled the business, no problem. But I do look at that BDS quadrant matchup because, again, it just proves that BDS still has a bit of a ways to go. There are a lot of group deaths here when we look at Group D, look at Group B. That's interesting. Vitality starting off 0-1 as well against Williams Resolve, a yeah. team that made it all the way to the Grand Finals last time. This is an interesting day one. Yeah, Jarby, this is, uh, I mean, it, it's an interesting early result, but obviously it can turn around, right? It can turn around, but it's scary because you pretty you're in a position now where getting out, uh, getting that top eight is really hard. And look, in both North America and Europe, that round one is a bloodbath. You're not yeah. safe down there, and so Vitality mm -hmm. being there it certainly uh, would be scary for them. And it's going to be that much tougher now. Well, we got more games coming your way. These are the matchups that'll be playing in round two. Reminder yet again, I can't stress enough: go support your favorite teams. Head on over, find their team streams, get in the chat and start spamming away. Uh, unless there are rules in their chats, they don't spam and you'll get timed out. But, you know, support them at least. And if you're sticking around here, you're going to see some more BDS because this time we have Moist heading up against the powerhouse or the previous, it seems, powerhouse of BDS. Because right now, BDS struggling to get those results in two regionals in a row, Spaceman and Moist. Well, they did have... Not the easiest of a win in the last one. A lot of overtimes for them. They did get theirs three to one. Yeah, what used to be a matchup we would be like, everybody stop what you're doing, come yeah. home, watch this match, is now an interesting affair between these two teams because we've seen a couple of roster changes, but we've also just seen the mm -hmm. fact that this is not these are not the same Moist and BDS squads we're used to. So this is going to be a very different affair. Like we've talked yeah. about ad nauseum at this point, Leaf. I don't expect this one to be as one-sided as many people would expect. Yeah, no, I. this is a, it, the, the air around it has definitely changed. And I'm curious, uh, chat, what you're thinking. You know what to do. I've already seen you spam the hashtags in the chat. Moist or BDS to take this one. I'm curious to the analyst, though, because uh, generally, again, when you see BDS, it's usually unanimous. But it's the opposite this time. We, we're all going moist. And I, I think, Jarby, it's, it's reasonable, at least based on early results. Yeah, are you losing faith in this BDS squad? Uh, look, I don't think BDS played that uh, that good of a game. I thought Monkey Moon looked good, but other than that, I wanted to see more mm. out of that team. So from what I saw from them mm. and the fact that Moist 3 owed them in round one in the Winter Open, yep. look, it, everything is going against BDS here. Yeah. Chat, what, 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 do, you, what do you got? Oh, wow, yeah, this is... Everybody... Everybody's kind of falling off the BDS train right now. This is, well, maybe they can surprise us, but yeah, this Spaceman is yeah. uh, definitely a huge turnaround moment for the European region with BDS. Look, man, everybody just got there. burned. Everybody just got burned with their BDS <laughs> points in the last game. So they don't have anything to bet on BDS. So like, look, <laughs> okay. moist, or, moist or nothing at this point. But if you're looking at just recency-wise, horrible way to start a conversation, great way to have one though. Again, like Jorby just talked about, it was a 3-0 sweep in round one of playoffs two weeks ago that Moist took down BDS and Moist looked like they're on the upswing. BDS looks like they're faltering a bit, probably making Charlie very happy. But what is it about Moist that's changed as this roster has changed? Jo uh, Jorby, what are you seeing out of them that uh, people need to take note of? I mean, it's got to be Juicy, right? Look at him work. Look at Juicy work in front of the net. Moist pick up a demo in front and Juicy got that first touch. He got a demo on the back end from Astral. And he sets up Joyo by bumping Seiko in back into the net. And Moist, it's a nice start, but yeah, Juicy picked up in place of Rise when he left. And I think a lot of people expected Juicy to be good, but I also think they didn't know when sure. he would have that pop-off moment. And I mean, I thought he looked great in the last regional. Here's Joyo, mm. what a pinch, a little too much juice for Astral to handle. And, you know, there's there's an acclimation period for a lot of new players coming onto the powerhouse squad. One like Moist, who had 
such a dominant year last year as a, as a trio. Again, the roster changes, sure, but you're always having that expectation on your shoulders. And Moist has one of the better goal differentials across the entirety of Europe, just looking at about a plus 16 for them, which is not too shy under essentially the likes of Quadrant, Liquid, Vitality, which they actually have a better one than Vitality. But this is a squad that I still think a lot of people are overlooking because you lose Vatira, because you lose Rise, and then you suddenly think, oh, well, their best two players are gone, so therefore the team isn't good anymore. It's not the case. Moist is still a very prominent squad, and they're trying to prove that here. And it's had to be, uh, had to have been uh, a difficult transition for Joyo. Absolutely. Uh, having so much love for his original squad, he's been vocal about that over time. I mean, he loves this squad as well, but to have your whole team kind of leave you with within the course of just one season. Like, mm -hmm. It was just last winter that Team Queso took the entire RLCS by storm as BDS get a nice transition goal here from Seiko. And I think the changes coming into this, at least game one, let alone the rest of this best of five for BDS have to be more consistency back on the midfield. We've seen them falter defensively a couple of times, but they look their best when they're in transitions, when they begin the counterattacks. We've seen Extra on Monkey Moon try to facilitate a lot of that offense, and Seiko sits nicely in those gaps to find rebounds, to find infield passes. The threads are there. The connective tissue was there for BDS. They just need more consistency across the board, something we've been saying for quite some time. And yet again, off the kickoff, they find themselves a successful win for a goal. Juicy was just left with a poor challenge. That was actually well done. I think that was Seiko on the 50 in front of him. Uh, Seiko, no uh, no dodge into the ball. Juicy backwards. Hard to time your flip. And when he did, well, it went right into Monkey Moon. BDS were given the goal, but I do think that was set up by a good leave on the 50 from Seiko. BDS, they were doing this in the series against Quadrant 2. I think the biggest question mark for BDS isn't really their offense or their ability to score. It's can they withstand pressure, which is something that historically they've been able to handle. Astral getting a piece of that. Joyo no boost and forces Monkey Moon too high. And the ability to withstand that pressure is very much fed into how the rest of their game tends to play out. It's been a struggle for them. Uh, are we 1v3? We might be as Joyo will try to play it through the corner. Has a lot of boost to continue this one. Juicy ready for the pass. Instead leaves off and now double commits everywhere as BDS go hunting for this ball and they will eventually be successful for their efforts before quickly taking it back. Joyo off the sidewall, puts it on target, Monkey Moon saves. BDS are trying to stand up to that pressure now and so far they're doing it. The rhythm set for Moist. BDS clears, they finally get a pass, but they can't connect. It was too fast for Seiko. Now Monkey Moon pops it back to extra, but the ball's knocked away. And BDS are forced back to their own wall much really working out right now for Moist on offense. They get to the midfield, but these passes keep getting cut off. That one, a perfect example, and a perfect bounce for Extra. He tries to drill it to the side. Seiko is following that 50. Forced to go backwards. BDS get put back on the orange half. Even after the first or second touch, if you're, if you're Moist, they haven't been able to kind of corral this down to the ground, looking for them to Essentially hold on to these possessions a little bit more longer. As that one's a very quality shot, but quickly BDS again finding ways to play man to man defense, keep the ball in front of them at all times, something they struggle with against Quadrant. For about past minute, it's been looks for BDS, looks for Moist, but BDS have handled the pressure and they've gotten right back out very quickly on counterattacks. Yeah, neither team able to build pressure. Oh, another disconnected pass. You know, some of these passes that BDS aren't connecting on aren't necessarily all their fault. It might be one a little too much power or your teammate has no boost downfield and it has to be a perfect pass. How about that one? Juicy tried to wrap around it. That was tough for him to get to. He's a little far off. BDS get another clear. Oh. Yeah, we saw the same thing. Just didn't eventually correlate into what could have been a 3-1 game. But regardless, about under a minute to go. If you are moist, the opportunities have been there. The boost has been there. Juicy. All he needs is a bump. Couldn't find it. Right over the defense. That's oh. a float through. And that's a long range goal for Monkey Moon. Moist. This one blows right through them. Joyo playing it close. Loses the 50. And Astro got caught creeping forward. And so many teams love to play aggressive as third man on those challenges, but. I, you really got to wait for these plays to develop in front. Otherwise, you, you get that. You know, Astral expecting Joyo to get there, but I mean, Joyo didn't even really get in like in a perfect spot to challenge the ball. He was a little behind. 
Astral. It's an aggressive spot to sit as third man. Obviously, you have 30 seconds to go. You gotta take risks, but wow. see how fast wow. the goals can swing and Astral comes out of the net for another save. This one looks like it's wrapped up. We've been waiting to see BDS force the Moist Offense to be patient, to give a little bit more on those outer swings. And finally, it does come through. Keeping that offense honest and that long clear from Monkey Moon that led way to a 3 one score line certainly helped. BDS and, get themselves a win. And Leaf, BDS, this time they start with a game win. It's not how it started yeah. against Quadrant, but we'll see if they can get things going. What else happened in the rest of the league? Well, I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, Quadrant continues on their run. They take their first win against Tundra Esports, which is uh, good for them. Hey, hey. Uh, Sonics get their streak shut down by Oxygen Esports. It's now one nothing for them. German Amigos finally grabbing themselves a dub against Endpoint. They remember almost got perfect swept by Sonics before, so maybe they'll be on a roll now. Uh, a couple other matches still going. The big one right now, the only one that, that really is is out there is right now G1 and Sa are playing, and Game 1 actually went to Sa. Mm. Uh, so, which is just not, yeah, Jeremy, a result I would, I would expect to see, to be honest, with that G1 roster. No, not at all. G1, they're always that team we're talking about kind of mm -hmm. right outside the of major contention in that six to eight spot. Uh, and everyone's kind of waiting for them to take the next step. But the Spanish team having their struggles, apparently. Moist versus BDS, where Moist owned the matchup in round one in the Winter Open. Yeah, BDS have struck first here and looked pretty good. They caught Moist out on, on a couple of errors but also created some of their own space man and that's a good feeling if you're bds yeah and it's flipping the script for what bds usually had going against them which was them creating their own errors which is not something we used to say however maybe this is just a battle of a better matchup these teams usually tend to play well against each other so far bds has made very few mistakes if any playing very clean rocket league like like we expect astral did basically all he could so it might have led way to an opening goal. And yet again, a long range shot from BDS that Moist just aren't prepared for. Yeah, I mean, jo Joyo's coming the whole way downfield and he turned, I'm not sure what Joyo was looking at. I mean, that ball blows through and say what you want about fo no follow up coming. I mean, Joyo just kind of drives full speed up the field. Sees Seiko has the ball and turns immediately up the wall, but Seiko can see him. And it was an easy choice for Seiko. It's again, third man creeping up before, mm -hmm. before it really, I mean, the field awareness has to be better for Moist. They are yeah. much better with field awareness most of the time, but this series is catching them out a few times. I mean, it definitely says more kind of about the quality of, of play we're seeing from Moist rather than the improvements from BDS. Just very flat start this series. Still a long one of the best of five. We've seen teams come and go as they start, but regardless, you got to tip the cap to how BDS have been able to shake off that last series and very quickly get themselves involved in this one. Is it going to be dangerous off the backboard? Two will commit. Moist sending defenders at this, but still a bit of traffic in the front of the boxes. Eventually, that ball does get cleared out to Seiko on his POV, trying to get it through the side. Can't quite find it. A bump helps, but BDS have nothing else to throw at it, and Extra will still find a way to corral this back. Nice work from Extra. Bringing that back. Gave himself just enough space to actually wrap around and get a 50. Now, a uh, interesting progression here for Moist. They might connect Joyo underneath, and oh my gosh, somehow they make it work. I would say that it takes two to tango, and it certainly threw BDS slightly off balance as Joyo. What a perfect touch from Astral to give Joyo a chance at that. You go from like scratching your head at the play to being like, okay, I guess it's working, as Joyo came from essentially no man's land and just punches that one down. It was a double commit that led way to the counterattack, and you're wondering how they're going to be able to keep this one alive. But Moist respond. A nice pass and a setup. Now Joyo off the kickoff will do the same. Juicy out in front. Running point through the corner, leaves it. BDS cleared away. Boost here for the boys in blue. Astral will circle back for the goal. Monkey Moon for the challenge, and it's kind of falling back to what we started with this series, right? Both teams kind of getting their fair shakes, but really it came down to BDS being able to pull the defense thin and Moist not having a lot of answers. I really like how Extra has looked so far, though, for BDS. Wasn't without a couple of his struggles in the series against Quadrant, but he dropped that pass to Seiko, which was the full field clear. And he's had a couple of breakthroughs on Moist in the midfield. He's out of boost here. Astral just going for the boost deal. Giving Monkey Moon the ball, and Moist let them come in. Juicy will shake Monkey Moon off. 
Joyo actually getting a demo on the opposite side of the field, and Ash mm. has to back up quickly for the 50 as Juicy rotates back. Moist, quick pass for BDS, and they don't connect. They got Joyo to fight. He didn't have a lot of boost. That was a big opportunity missed. I don't know if it's a communication thing, but there's been a couple of times where we see Astral kind of as the third man back from Moist. He's a little bit late to some of these reads, whether it's just a missed call oh. or not. There seems to be a problem with getting that third man up or having that commitment at least. They've been slow to some of these hits, but maybe that changes here. The infield extra tried to sneak it through. Astral finally finds the save he was hunting for for the past minute or so. You were wondering about Astral too mm -hmm. a, a little bit, but that was a perfect read on the situation. He knew he had an attacker in the corner, so he whips around in front of the net expecting the pass instead of trying to go for the challenge. And it worked out really well for him, but they have to get the ball back as well. Uh-oh, that's a big miss. That's a big shot for extra. And BDS continue to punish Moist mistakes. Yeah, it's small mistakes like that, where in this series alone, there haven't been a lot from BDS. If they're going to get an opportunity, that's about as free as it comes. Joyo misses, Juicy the same. And there's all kinds of space down there for extra to work. With how much they worked, they being Moist for their first goal, the last thing you want to do is give away something like that. I feel like both of these teams are much better at defense. Ooh. I really do. Wait, you want to say that again? You want <laughs> I mean, this is a great time? pass. This is a really nice pass. And Astral throws it right underneath. It's good. But like, at the same time, I mean, seeing some of these, Monkey Moon, he has to respect Astral popping that ball up and he gave him a grounder. That was just a great shot and a good pass. Well, you kind of negate the entire conversation of how hard you had to work for goals, because if you get it back that quickly, Astral, hold on. And instead of going for that demo, I like the call from Moist. Try to get back to midfield, establish a presence yet again. Now you can play with your possessions here. And Seiko will fall back. Maybe he was thinking about challenging through the corner, but instead will keep himself parked on Earth as Juicy misses the touch, leaves it to Astral, pops it high. Astral has a lot of room to work with here. Resets it to the corner, didn't like the look he was given, instead tries for the team to get back up. Yeah, better than anywhere else he could have put that ball. He was, yeah. By the time he got there, just needed to keep it close. And look what it's done, it's kept Moist in control of the midfield. Joy, a small touch over Monkey Moon, trying to get a bump. And Juicy helping out with a bump as well, but Astral was playing deep, seeing both Juicy and Joyo trying to work. And now Joyo cooks one up. Oh my goodness, it's a three-course melee putting on the board. How do you even defend this? I don't really know there's an answer. That's a great clear from Astral. And Joyo gets all kinds of corkscrew action to spike this into the ground. The perfect trajectory on this one. Meets it from the midfield, the pre-jump there, the read. All you can do with your BDS is just nod and wave, go next. Let Joyo cook. Good things are gonna happen for Moist, but they need to play good defense as well. Here they come, a two-man attack! Monkey Moon, if you can't beat them, delete them! Tie game! Under 30 to play, and Seiko yet again finding ways to be the catalyst. May get a 1v2, but help with the demo. High fives all around from BDS. You give one, you take one, you get one. It's a tie game. Almost every single time, a goal of response has happened almost immediately after the last goal is scored. Now Seiko flip reset, but Joyo falls on it. Moist under a little pressure at the end of regulation. Joyo, soft touch, held onto that air roll to keep the speed. Now Astral's got the catch. Here come Moist on the aerial attack, but Juicy has to stay flat and they're grounded for now. Joyo back in the air, underneath on the 50, a demo on the back side. Might give BDS one last chance at the end, but they're going to let it drop. Yeah. You go to OT. Smartly played. You don't want to bring that to your own side of the field. Worst case scenario, you're taking the tie series, but uh, kickoff win, dangerous, but BDS fall off. Juicy will take it. 12 boost. Oh my, Juicy almost puts this one through, but a big clear from extra. Surely Joyo will be there, and he will. Moist have another chance to breathe. Didn't last long. Monkey Moon shot. Oh, we almost got the dunk. A demo from Extra. And oh, Astral with no boost makes two massive stops for Moist. On oh, Forbidden Temple. Moist trying to get in front of this. And ball right back. Astral coming in from the back of the rotation. Extra is waiting in midfield. And Joyo's got to cut in. Juicy and Astral sitting back here for Moist. Monkey Moon. Everyone's waiting to see how he touches that one. And Extra jumps, but Joyo got there first. Pass out Astral. Too far away for him. Moist yeah. get out of a really squirrely situation on defense. Now Juicy, a high pop. One off the ceiling and taken away by BDS. Oh, Astral just barely misread that touch. He went to get boost out of Extra's tank and did so, but was a little bit behind the ball. A miss from Monkey Moon, uncharacteristic as that was game there. Almost called it, but just couldn't find the touch. Astral, who's been everywhere on the field in the past 20 seconds, 
will get himself back to the 50-yard line, but waiting for the touch. Take off the ceiling. This is disgusting. It's on target. Big save from Juicy. Still alive for both teams, but BDS are pressing. Another pass, another shot, but Astral gets there in time again. Three, he gets credit for a save on that even. He was so far out of the net. Joyo coming across. And Moist continue to build pressure. Can they beat BDS in this corner? Just a couple of touches that just go right back to a BDS defender. The clears have been denied by Moist. Joyo underneath on the reset. It's not good enough. And Seiko sent it as high as possible without touching the ceiling. Monkey Moon denied by Joyo, who's also cutting rotation really well, getting in front of these challenges. But Moist still have to hang on. A demo on the backside by Monkey Moon. Makes one miss. Extra. Comes around. Bump! Goal! And BDS have taken a two-game lead! Oh, cutting rotation only matters if you don't get bumped off the play again. And just look at the extra presence from Extra. Takes out Joyo, the only person back for Moist. The pressure was too much. BDS had everything in the toolkit to get this one done. They respond well. And that's the BDS we're used to seeing. In the final minute of this game, it was absolute chaos. But BDS with a 2-0 lead in the series yet again. Moist, uh, you, you got to point back to the defensive errors in, in this situation again. This one may have been in hand. Had Joyo not pushed up the field, had the double commit whip not happened, those were freebies that you gave BDS. Now you make the journey a little harder, Leaf, uh, on yeah. your journey to make a top eight. So... <clears throat> Disagree with me if you want here. Uh, I know you guys are mentioning Monkey Moon looking like the the one that was okay on the, on the team, right? But I feel like Extra is the only one that's been consistently all right on, on BDS, right? Like these wins still don't look convincing or a, t a top BDS to me at this point. The rest of the matches, by the way, are all like game three is all tied up. So there's nothing really, nothing really well, crazy going on. But I think it's better. I think Extra's playing better this series. I, I don't think he had his best series against Quadrant. Yep. I thought him and Seiko Correct. I guess I am. Uh, had some issues on defense. Game. I also feel like Quadrant created some of those as well. But it wasn't BDS's game on defense mm -hmm. against Quadrant. They do. Look, I do agree with you though. Leaf Extras looked a lot better in this series so far against Moist. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, it's it's really K, K Corp and Oxygen on match point uh, and Vitality as well, but like that was expected. All the other games are pretty close, so go join the team streams. Go join the team streams. Seiko's looked a lot more comfortable as well. It doesn't look like maybe he's second guessing a lot of his his opening possessions at midfield. The, all the kickoffs, he's been clean. His rotations have been good. This is a much more comfortable BDS, and maybe it's just the fact that they're they're feeling more confident with their shots. They're finding more goals. Sometimes it takes a team a while to wake up, but. They haven't been making as many blatant mistakes as we've seen before, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, BDS also making use of the space that Moist had given them when they were on offense and taking full advantage of it. Not just using the infield for their passing, but also using the air and getting height, keeping the ball close. BDS have been executing well on that front. That being said, like, Moist have been in this series the whole time. And yeah. it takes, it, it, all, all it really takes for them, I think, is just shoring up that defense. I think BDS are going to have a much tougher time if Moist don't give them the freebies that they were given. You've been fighting on the back foot for what seems like the past three minutes, even at the end of that last game. Two demos, one a boot. It's a 2v2 downfield. A nice play by Seiko. Fall off from the trajectory, catch it, set it back out extra. Keeping this one going. It's going to be a tough loader to read, but... Moist are more than happy to keep that challenge on the backboard consistent as they have for the majority of this series, barring that double commit that was just an absolute miss in game two. They're down 2-0 in this one. Do they have what it takes to bring this one back slowly but surely? I think they do. BDS are a tough opponent to do it against. Good 50 from Joyo. He just didn't have a follow-up. And no pass either. It was attempted by Juicy. BDS kind of falling on this ball in the corner. Extra having to protect the back. And the passes are connecting again. Moist, a little off ball on defense. But all of BDS had to pull off. I think wanting to protect that midfield boost. They did. But now they need to protect the ball, which is loose in front of the box. But they get on top of it. Seiko non-touch. And just in time, Joyo gets there. I was like, where's Astral? He's got to be back there. It was Joyo. He was able to find it. <laughs> There's Astral for the high five. But another double commit. But Joyo will be there regardless. The defense handling so far. Now can they counter it? Bring it back out to midfield. If you're moist, the possessions haven't been sustained long enough for anything positive to come of it. As yet again, BDS will be there. Extra and Seiko have all the room here to work with. 
good 50 from extra as well to kill the ball in the corner. Now he's downfield, lobs it high for Seiko. Seiko, big shot, but it's off the bar. And BDS robbed by the fourth man. Extra wants one more, robbed by the fourth man once more, except I think he kind of gave him that one. Here's another one for mm. Papa Seiko to commit, but Juicy's got control and falling back down. BDS leave a big one off the board. Just a little bit too flat. It was the right play, just a little bit too flat, but extra. Oh, uh -oh. that's a beautiful, oh. wow! <laughs> Juicy comes from the absolute blender and just explodes into the ball. Oh. What happens when you put too much in there? Extra. Appreciate you picking out what I'm putting down. Get that one up for Seiko. Up high though for Moist. They've stood fine on defense for now, and they're stable, but these 50s look really precarious. Astral for control. That one may be a little too fast, but he gets the 50. And BDS kicked the ball away. Forced the challenge in midfield. Astral comes back quickly on the whiff. And there are a couple of little oopsies from Moist that are making you worried, but here's a pop-up for Joyo, and he just doesn't have a clean angle, but he forces the touch out to the side for Juicy. Juicy, back up. He's got 40 as he leaves. Off the ceiling, no touch. Moist continue to hunt, but the game is sparse. Joyo, Goomba stomped by Seiko again. Monkey Moon lobbing this one up. Pass over to Extra. They break through Moist again. Off the top. Oh, what a grab. Juicy coming back downfield, but it was Astral again on defense. And they're holding on to BDS. It's not over. A quick pass. Monkey Moon had it wide, and the ball comes screaming back out. Extra trying to find it. Juicy, another catch, and we play on. Uh, Moist are so low in the tank. They don't have a lot to give here. Juicy finally gets a full hundred, but he's really the only one. This is just a 1v1. What do you do in this spot? What do you possibly conceive of? It's not even a cerebral play. It's just do the math. There's nowhere to go, and you don't have that much boost. Juicy has a guessing game, and he's got both hands tied behind his back. He's got no eyes. I don't know what, I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah, I mean, the ball, the ball kicked back out, and Joyo had full boost for, first on the ball, but like, it, was, it was fully in control of BDS, and he thought... Oh, maybe I could just cut the pass for a challenge, but he was oh. so far off of it. Here's Juicy trying to get him back, and he doesn't! Monkey Moon! What a deny! Well, there's been some great saves on Moist then, but now Monkey Moon trying to ensure a sweep against Moist, giving him one back from the Winter Open. Juicy looking for a way in with 15 seconds left. Going off to the side, extra on the 50. Juicy wants a bump. Oh, wait, underneath, and a perfect pop for extra, but Joyo's got Juicy on the wing. Connects. What has he got? 86 and a dream. No time left. Got the 50 in front. Back to Astral. One touch to Juicy. One more to Joyo. He's there. Oh, the fourth man ruins Moist. And BDS sweeps them. There's really not much you can say against GG's, but BDS just too good in the end. Moist had to work overtime just for that look alone and the bar punishes, the fourth man comes up big. Leaf, I it's tough. He hit the bar, man. Mm -hmm. you, everything went right! Everything went right! <laughs> yeah, they quite literally had to play their like best rock. got the controlling the... touch. Juicy beat the second defender on the backboard. And how many times do you get a free read off the backboard against PDS? And Joyo had a free shot. It was Joyo. He didn't have rise. Jer Jerby. He didn't have rise, Leaf. We're not, we're not very good at this prediction thing. I just, I'm sorry. I didn't expect, I didn't expect Moist to play. <laughs> I didn't expect Moist to play like that. Well, we have a, a ton of other matches still going on right now. As I mentioned before, this one ended up uh, being the first one done. So we're just going to chill out. We're going to hang out, lounge around, and watch some of these other matches as they're on. You see Sonics and Oxygen on the board right now. Oxygen was right. at match point. It seems like Sonics is... I believe would be trying to reverse sweep, but uh, it doesn't look like they're gonna pull that off. There's your rise if you were looking for him. Jerby's right there. He's, <laughs> he's currently scoring. Yeah, I'm going to see him. Then, you know, Oxygen, who had, honestly, for the, for their standards of a, of a squad, really kind of a, 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 I would say like a lackluster showing. Granted, they did make it to the semifinals uh, two weeks ago. So it's really just kind of your perspective of lackluster, but we're expecting this to be a championship caliber team, but also the fact that they struggled somewhat in their group stage. But even looking at how Sonics have played, I think this is one of the better iterations of Sonics that this this organization has seen. These are the kind of midweight teams, Sonics being one of them, where you never know what you're going to get, and they could very well play spoiler to a lot of squads as they just connect on a beautiful touch with 10 seconds to go. Okay, let's see what they got on the kickoff. See if they can force it. 
I will say for Rise, it's funny. The last time they played Sonics and they lost those first two games, mm. Rise had that like 1v4 that let Oxygen win game three. Because Sonics were about to win game three too. Mm-hmm. And then Rise happened. And I'm pretty sure he like by himself pulled that team out of their mental rut. Like he's been such a such an addition to this roster. Oh my god. Oh my god, he did it! Oh my god, smokes! Wow. Bro, the demo too. That's, that's, that's a oh, perfect touch from R2, pinch, bro. That pinch was just oh chef's kiss. <laughs> like make a whole new ratatouille off of that. Good god. <laughs> oh man. Anybody can pinch. Like, ooh. Yeah, but that was that was the chef's pinch for sure. That was nice. <laughs> it's good soup. Uh, does it, I was about to say, is it just end with, a, with a hard double? <laughs> oh, goodness. But, you know, I think the, the fun stat for today has been, there's been some predictability, sure, but it still seems like everybody's in kind of their day one rut. Granted, they've had about a week off, but Tundra eventually picking up dub, looking at how Quadrant Tundra played last time about two weeks ago in the opening winter uh, winter regional for Europe. It was Quadrant who won 3-0 in a pretty convincing fashion. Still a close series, but at the end, Quadrant just looked too strong. Quadrant have a very good chance to come out number one in their group, Stormy. And I, you know, after how they performed, it, 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 you said it, Space Man, you said it at the beginning of the show. I didn't believe you. you said that Quadrant, they get better with My time. superpower. Just like, a, just like a fine wine. Oxygen had a long stay on offense there. Oh, I guess they get back just like that, huh? I guess that's what happens when you have Archie <laughs> and Jory is on your team. And, Must uh, be nice. Just uh, off screen right now, Endpoint German Amigos in the final minute of gameplay with Endpoint up 2-0 against German Amigos. Uh, you know, I thought maybe this was going to be where German Amigos were going to get a dub, but yeah, they're not. If it stays that way, they're not having a hot day. They're going to be 0-2 in their group. Yeah, it's pretty disappointing for German Amigos. You know, they, they made two, stri two straight top fours. So I think a, a lot of people were feeling really good after the Winter Open. But I don't know. I I wasn't as sold on German Amigos. It was hard to say for me. But seeing them struggle this much, I didn't even expect that. I, I expected them yeah. to be competitive uh, in some of those matches. But too well, strong. I mean, they're in a game five, right? But yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah, that's that's totally fair. But I guess uh, more competitive against it was uh, Sonics. Yeah. Sonics, yeah. That's true. I did not expect that to be a 3 0. But hey, just the Sonics, though. You know, like, that's a good, especially after their they're, they're running uh, G1 Invitational. You, you, when you get a result like that, you're like, okay, can we keep it wait, up? And then, wait, except. Oh. Go ahead. And when it doesn't, it hurts. Yeah, sorry. I thought, I thought a double was about to happen because I saw a free backboard. It was not to be. No soup for you. Got the got too much of a drop. Dorito punching one in for G1 at the end of the game, solidifying their game win. Yeah, you wanna you wanna look at the uh the score line on that real quick though? What's the score? Uh it's two one for, for Saw. Uh, yeah, that's crazy. I think I remember you saying that earlier. Yeah, yeah, they were up one oh at one point. Now they're two one. Yeah, honestly, it's uh, I mean, that's, these are, that's a roster we've seen before, you know, though Mike mm. Boy, Toxic, like th these are these are these are players we've seen, but still G1 is is one of those teams I consider to be a, to a top five in, in the European region or or at least close to that range, you know, Mark by eight, Atomic, Dorito. And then the fact that Sa is getting dubs, huge for Sa or an oddity for G1. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, Smokes, Smokes with it. He's got the challenge. This has been a really tight OT. I, like, there have been a couple of times Sonics get on offense, but they, they've only got like one or two shots off. They can't really punish mm -hmm. Oxygen's rotation just yet. That's a great win, though. Oh, I mean, you, would, you would think with the brevity of, of options you have if you're Oxygen offensively from Archie, Jorius, and Rise, three minutes in, they've been able to find a look anywhere, but that's just credit to how Sonics have played this. Oh, did you see the Wifty Wifty, bro? That oh, gave the chance. Oh, just shoot it. Just shoot that. Oh, they had the pass covered. I, I, you got a guy. You got a guy in net too. Like sometimes I just think you hold shoot. on. Nah, he was there. He was there. I was looking for the the, the bump that would have potentially led into park bus. Wait, oh, oh that would that would have been huge. That would have been absolutely <laughs> okay, <nutty. buddy. laughs> Oh, hey, look at that. Also, I was wrong on the time. There's, the scoreboard I was looking at was so small. I thought there was a minute left, but there's still have a minute thirty left um, on that. But hey, uh, goal back there. Oh. Oh, wait. Oh, no one's around. That always happens, man. 
You get the ball comes for free off the backboard, and everybody's sitting in their own third. Like, man, that could have been a goal. Could be just whether oxygen don't want to be the first ones to make a mistake. But look, if you're four minutes into OT, take some risks. <laughs> make some mistakes. You have a lead. Listen, you make, please make some mistakes. If you're five minutes into overtime, yeah, you got to make some mistakes, bro. Just you know, yeah. be, a little, be, a little, be a little be a little crazy, be a little stupid. It's fine. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Oh my god, I keep getting in front of the fifties. See, that's so right. risky, dude. Oh my god, it's always him. It's always oh, him. he is him. He is him. <laughs> They say let him cook, but he's been cooking for years. There it is. Finish off there for Oxygen. Wow, this is tied up now. German Amigos endpoint. Okay, okay. The dub is the the a win in the group is still there for German Amigos. That's a good climb back. Two goals within a minute, I believe that is now. Then Liquid Resolve also in their game five, a one goal difference. For Man, what's going on with Resolve this week? Resolve always do this. I, I'm you know, listen, Ever since they qualified in Regional 1, I'm a big fan of that Resolve roster, how they, they don't stop fighting up until the final second. They've always found a way to kind of find more gas as, as they're losing or as they're trying to find a lead. But again, you're going against a Team Liquid roster that has to also prove that Regional 1 was a fluke. And so far, it seems that they're doing it. However, German Amigos trying to hold on to their current tie, if not win this one outright. Ball still up. And we'll go to OT on Champions Field. German Amigos, big series for them here. Love seeing Devo continue to make regionals. He's got Crispy, too. Crispy, really good player. And German Amigos, is, is, Endpoint are definitely a team that if you, if you think you're a major team, they're not one that should be playing you this hard. But, you know, it's Europe where Williams resolves uh, and all of these teams in the, in the 10 to 16 range can... Beat a, beat a top five team or a mm -hmm. team that should be competing for top five. Always fun. And they starting to get that way now. But like, Dign like Dignitas make it top four. That's a new thing for NA. Liquid end up getting the dub there. Catalyst mm -hmm. though, puts in it another is. goal. And that's it. Yep. German Amigos survive against Endpoint and they get a dub. Yeah, they'll be 1-1 one, one in their group now. Again, these, <laughs> these groups are... Uh, are generally across the board pretty um pretty tight i mean we're seeing k corp and oxygen as we generally expect them to be at the top of their of uh, their groups but yeah that's uh it's pretty intense oh hey look at this tied up game five two minutes left and saws up yo we gotta listen in black those on the field into the corner might as well defend down the field rather than allow the orange team out here in g1 who would certainly have been expecting to win this series. They're not in a too happy of a spot right now as Mike Boy drops it down. We'll look for the flip Which for the bomb. bomb. The save from save. Dorito. My oh, goodness. Let's not have go down the other end now. No, 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 no. Boost. Atomic is full now. Looks off the ceiling. Maybe for an infield pass. It's double off the floor. What is that? It's not in. That's what matters. Though with the half flip, running it around the corner. 84 on the clock as he runs it down the right-hand side. Atomic will pick it up and recover the possession for G1. But Dorito, he's got another touch around here. The corner pinch overcooks it, though. Overcook 2, a fantastic game, but not as good as Rocket League. That's why we're watching him playing that. Throw down the air dribble, looking for the double. Doesn't have the boost, but the rebound. Toxic squeezes it through, and it's a two-goal lead. I'm still speechless from that double save earlier. Thanks for covering. My goodness. What? We got I it. I mean, we'll go, we go again. 2 0. <sighs> nice little 50 50 from Toxic, the X one's made. And that's over, but dangerous off the backboard. They get a kickoff goal. You've got to pre jump the first shot. I don't like, there's nothing, uh, there's nothing Toxic can do here. Got to have a look at uh, Atomic shooting this series, and it's been pretty pinpoint, so I don't know why you wouldn't go. But. Ends up being a really good pass. Okay. That's a demo this time from Mark Bayard off the kickoff. As the comeback from G1 could be consisting of two immediate kickoff goals. Thankfully, the second is prevented. Waiting for better weather. But a terrible Ooh, commit. Oh, he's got commit. the boost to recover and touch he's it to done the this corner. time and time again. It Just shouldn't forth. work, but it does. Another beat in midfield allows an infield pass to Rito. 
Toxic flying down from the heaven gets the touch, though again reading off his own backboard. We semi survive for now. Can Tho get a touch on this? Yes, past the first man. Another infield pass from G1. Looking for that top shelf. Atomic reads it off the backboard. Don't we play on G1. Have pulled back the two goal deficit. Marked by eight to Atomic. Tucks it in like Tarzan swinging by on the rebound. And there could be more late drama here on Champions Field. So. I've got more to do, I'm afraid, here. Mike Boy with a very, very chatty kickoff. Gets us on the front foot in the remaining 15 seconds. It's off the side wall aggressively, but it's one out by Atomic. Mike Boy now up on the backboard. One of these teams will be going to round three in heartbreak, and I don't want it to be us, because though, with the crucial interception here in the dying seconds of regulation, but I think it might be. It may not be. It should be. That's it will be. A game, right, we go to game five, five overtime. overtime. Woo. Okay. Pretty cool kickoff. Mark goes for that as third man, which uses a lot of boost. It could leave us with a favorable 50, but he does get round toxic. Looks for the shot in the near post. Mike Boy saves it and then beats out Dorito to the rebound. Along with a good pinch clear. And we are out of the kickoff goal. Shenanigans G1 have pulled on us this game. Dorito. Goal bound. G1 undeniably the team with the momentum having come back from being 2-0 down late on here in game 5. It's off the front post read incredibly well by Mike Boy considering how difficult that would have been in his spot. It's Toxic forcing a dunk out of Dorito. So, -jump from here. Yeah. Dangled it mid again. Mike Boy just about makes it there. Atomic forced to bail his team out as they've progressed very heavily once more. Can they form an attack here? I don't know. But I would like <laughs> to see that attack go away rather quickly. As it does yes. through a clear from Toxic. But he's not following up on the wall. I don't think he had much boost. He uses to take that back boost back. And he's now going to be able to get the long clear. Atomic will have to go cross field. Picked up by Dorito though. And a critical challenge to be made by Tho. It goes up high but it's not far enough away from the wall. And we cannot wrestle this possession Permanently away from G1. Toxic with the save on the backboard. Save. Atomic with the clearance Lord. to Mike Boy. Great team yeah. playing sportsmanship. And we carry on. Mark by eight. Looking to the backboard. Atomic's not going to make the same read he made for two all. It's a once in a game thing. Toxic looks towards the backboard. It's not going to do much to G1's defense. We're really going end to end here, two minutes into game five overtime. I think I might get myself some popcorn here. We could be here a while. This is the oh, classic, classic G1 star play. Two minutes of overtime after 2 2 game. I don't know. You look away, and that'll be when it happens. Dorito's getting his flip reset through the midfield. Atomic with the shot, and you never know. Sometimes when that's got enough source on it, enough power, you just cannot get back in time. And what a dunk from Atomic to keep it. In the blue, unfortunately for us, we build up the counter-attack again regardless, though. And Tho does a magnificent job forcing all of Dorito's resources. Mike Boy's shoulder to shoulder with Atomic. And no shot will come out just yet. Dorito up, looking for a drop down. Tho should have this fine Champions Field announcer making it out to be slightly better than it was. All these players. Oh, no. Oh, that's a demo. Mike Boy saving in the midfield in front of goal. But there was no one there. We've got a miss. Toxic just about gets up to it. But that's a great beat out by Tho. Does he have an open net? Is it just in? It's in! It's G1 just in! G1 overcommit. It's just Mark in! My 8 was more last than he thought he was. It's just we in! Take game 5. What on... I was... Uh... <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy, your uh. laugh was just as hearty. Just... <laughs> It was good. <laughs> that was great. That was nice. Every every second of that, loved it. Uh, <laughs> that was awesome. Great, wow. great overtime, but uh, unfortunate for G one. That one, that one really yeah. has to hurt for them. But man, it's great to watch the lower seeds win. No, that is not a result you're looking for as G one because that keeps things open now. Solary was zero and two in the group, and and they're like, oh, okay, this keeps this is good. This is all right. Let's. Uh, Let's let's keep this going. All right, uh, but uh, they'll have yeah. to find out how the rest of that group goes after the next break. Here, I saw people uh, asking in the chat when that Liquid Vitality match is going to be. 
It's right after the break. Come on back. So I think like mentality is the most important thing in Rocket League when it comes to long term things. This is what we aim for with the BDS roster and like the BDS organization in general. Mentality like helps you to sustain your energy and your motivation at top level with all of the things that you endure every day, like uh, stress, anxiety. So I think, yeah, it's mostly about this, like mentality is important for long term things. Basically, when we have like a kind of stressful situation in front of us, we always do like meditation and breathing exercise. We chill with each other a bit. And then just before the game, we go again like by reminding the players what do we want in our communication? What do we want on field? In what situation we are searching for a pass or for like a shot? And so they know what they have to do on the field after. Even though they are feeling stressed, you know, their mind is like, uh, fully taken by the fact that, okay, in the field, my job is this, you know, and I will do this in the game. I think the situation where, like, mentality helped us a lot was against uh, Furia in semi-final at Worlds. Uh, we were down 0-2, down if I can remember, and then I take the timeout, and this is the point where, like, you can see um, the team going together, like, we were like, you know, it can be the last uh, series of the season, you know? Okay, play this match like this is the last one, you know, like tomorrow you, you are at home anyway and the season is over. So play like without regrets. I want them to like get out of this tournament, no matter the outcome, uh, proud of themselves. And I know that for Monkey Moon, Seiko and Extra, the only outcome they would have been proud of was winning. It went our way, kind of. Ladies and gentlemen, your dress finals!
Welcome all to more Rocket League as we continue on day one of the European Cup of the winter split here in the 22-23 season. I'm Lee Fex. I remain that, but we've transformed our panelists into two other people. James Bot and CJ are the new identities. James Bot, Europe is uh, proving again to be a little confusing on, on being able to make predictions. I mean, I, we were uh, hanging out in the... Uh... In the green room, just discussing, and Direct actually brought up what I think might be the most effective strategy for trying to predict Europe, and it's just flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he was saying. I and I believe him, and honestly, he probably performs better than most. No, <laughs> no, these that. are just North Americans hanging out in the green room complaining about EU leaf. It's just it's the same story every time. <laughs> Why do you got to bring regions into this, CJ? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, that's a hot topic at the moment. We're gonna stay out of it. <laughs> stay down. <laughs> Who is what and where? But either way, the the story is that the things are a little a little wild right now. Again, especially look at Sa getting that win over G one, a team that are going into this. I I probably again would would keep near that top five of teams. Uh, Sonic started off great, but then couldn't finish up in the next. So it's a lot of back and forth. Your K Corps though, James, I like this. You know, like uh, Liquid uh, or Oxygen. I like that those are two teams we expect to be at the top and are at the top right now. Oh, certainly. I mean, there is a, a little bit of predictability just looking at, you know, the really top teams that you expect to perform are performing. Oxygen sitting at two. Uh, OK, Corp mm -hmm. as well. Liquid looking very solid. I think, you know, some of the teams that are kind of making this interesting is Group B. Everyone split one in yeah. one right now, not knowing how that group is going to pan out. And then also uh, Vitality. They made it to the grand finals and uh, they're going to have another tough matchup here against Team Liquid. Yeah, they're going into this round, though, with a 1-1 one, one record. Here's all your matchups for this third round. This is do or die. This is where we find out who's going to make making it into that playoff bracket. A reminder, when this round's done, don't turn off the stream. We are going to be playing that first round of the playoff bracket after this. But if you do want to watch all these matchups, they'll be playing on team streams. You can go find those streams across your streaming platform of choice. Cheer on your favorite team in the chat. But over here on the main stream, we're going to hone in on one specific matchup. And that's going to be Team Liquid facing off against Team Vitality. Team Liquid leading the group 2-0 right now. Vitality behind them at 1-1. One one. CJ, this matchup brings in some scenarios. Uh, this can go either way. That one spot still still open. It certainly does. Vitality, you know, you, you see Liquid here 2-0. They look comfortable. But if Vitality win is 3-1 or 3-0, they will go on top of the group, which is massive. So mm -hmm. it's not just about winning the series here, James. They don't want to take this to Game 5, Vitality. They, they want to win it 3-1. Otherwise, it's going to be Liquid's group. But, you know, another thing, too, is... It Leaf says it's do or die. It's not do or die for everybody. I well, think. not everybody. You're right. Okay. 
So, so Vitality, I don't, uh, I believe they cannot finish last in the group. So this is really just an opportunity for them to, to take that top spot, which gets you that, that buy in the first round, takes you right into the quarters, makes you not have to play the round before. So there is a, lo a lot to play for here. I don't think the pressure is as much for either one of these teams. They're going to be feeling very comfortable uh, and confident, but that also will be interesting to see how they play in this uh, context. It kind of release, uh, releases you from your bonds and lets you play with a lot of freedom. Well, uh, let's uh, let's see chat what you got. Hashtag TL, hashtag Vitality in the chats. Who's going to take this one? Vitality, again, a lot of scenarios. They can they can take this one. But uh, I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, again, I don't know if it's going to be a 3-0. Because I, I, I saw our predictions early. Let's get them on the board. I'm the only one going uh, the odd man out on this. Uh, just based off what I've seen from the results so far with Liquid, I feel like today... Is it a, if we're looking at last week, yeah, little little iffy on their early start here, but the fact they're having a decent early start, um, I think is fine. They sure they went to game five against Williams Resolve, but I mean Williams Resolve having a good day too. They took down Vitality, right? So I don't know the fact that Vitality dropped the game even to much delight. Uh, you're gonna have to convince me more, uh, CJ and James, on on this Vitality pick because uh, and chat apparently too. Um, I'm just not quite on it, James. That's fine. I don't need to convince you of anything. We'll let the okay. results speak for yeah, themselves. Vitality got to the grand finals last time. Yeah, we know Liquid's good, but are they good enough to take down Vitality, who has had a bit of a hot streak after they were about as cold as you can get, CJ? Yeah, um, probably down and out before the start of this split, and then all of a sudden we saw them make the grand final. I'm not sure what Leaf's talking about here. Why do we need to convince me about Vitality, who just got I top two? I, I don't know what Lee's talking about either, but that's kind of the the, 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 time, I the don't either, to be honest. <laughs> it's the whole point. <laughs> we, just, I know. we never know what Lee's going Canadians, on about. Man. Wacky Canadians. Oh, they're my brothers. They're, they're the cousins of Australians. The Commonwealth. We're all about it here, but in this series, well, there's no Canadians or Australians to cheer for, so we're going to have to pick Which a team. Which is surprising, because in North America, we've got it all. <laughs> Where's the Canadians? <laughs> <laughs> very, very surprising indeed. However, Redostin yeah. has stopped moving. He's stopped moving out in the corner. So uh, I kind of was kind time. of expecting. Oh, there he goes. Lost connection. How do, you, how do you expect to win this match when you're down a play? Come on. You guys didn't see this. You didn't predict Well, this Leaf, uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure it's I tough it. to use your eyes, but they, the admins paused the game. You saw the ball <laughs> freeze there. I actually so then walked you wait. over to his computer, unplugged it just to get, make sure I get the... The prediction went on this. Yeah. I don't oh, he's know back. back. Okay. <laughs> wow. So yeah. we'll see how long it takes. So, uh, and I mean, as someone who's uh, casted a lot of uh, Justin, this doesn't phase me. I'm used to this. So. You're, you're a disconnect mm -hmm. main. I, I just wanted us to get into the series, you know, warm up. Me and James, you know, when I saw the rotation and realized James was going to be myself and, and yourself, I just got so excited. But it's been a very poor start, I must admit. <laughs> We're I mean, we're, down, James. <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> That's all right. We're we're just trying to get this thing started. So the admins uh, say it in chat. They're gonna restart the game. It'll be at four eighteen, and it's gonna go back to kickoff. So it won't just be a simple unpause, which makes sense with the disconnect coming through for um, Radisson. So I do. I do want to remind you on that scenario uh, that Vitality, even with a, a three two win, can still get the number one spot, but they would need Williams uh, Resolve uh, to lose. So uh, even even with Liquid getting two wins here. There, there's still the potential that Vitality ends up getting number one spot. So the, Vitality is set up in a good spot to still get that as long as the as long as they get the win. Well, we'll see if they get the win. Don't want to get too far too far ahead of ourselves, CJ. Even though that's what we predicted, so the the chances are probably 90-10, give or take five percent. I feel like the the whole point of casting though is to get too ahead of yourself. You know what I mean? Like it's all about sort of. Almost Analysis? predicting. Well, yeah, I guess prediction you say as well. But it's almost just trying to force things to happen with your voice. You know what I mean? I actually have no idea. <laughs> you know, like just when you see a play like sort of start, and you think, you imagine if this happens, and then you sort of try and build it up, but then nothing really happens. Isn't that no, I, when so, like so? Right here, I say, imagine if Verdos and flip resets yes. off this ball. You're always and thinking about I'm the wrong. what if. <laughs> so, no, I don't do that. <laughs> That's bad. That's a bad idea. Okay, never mind. Just say what I saw. Oh, well, well, never mind that. Look, we could have a really rough weekend um, coming up with, with me and you. However, <laughs> Oski's not having a rough weekend, James, well, because they're 2-0 right now in the group. 
And Team Liquid, I feel like they're this team that we, we know how good they are, but we also know how bad they can be. And it was an interesting thing if you caught what uh, Nolly was saying over on First Touch. Uh, he was saying teams that have great individual ability, but they just aren't always the best teams. He, he mentioned Liquid. He mentioned uh, Liquid, he mentioned Oxygen, mentioned Phase. And I think that's very apparent, this Team Liquid squad, so individually, mechanically nuts, but sometimes it's that team play you know, where they're getting beaten. So, and that's something that Vitality's been fantastic at. Yeah, it, it goes to show that if you want consistency, you, you're not gonna get that just relying on mechanics. You really need that structure, that teamwork, which is, you know, I don't want to, I don't want this to turn into the Gen G show, but that's what sort of what we see with those guys over oh, in oh, North oh. America as a flip reset nearly opens the door well, where are we going to see this first goal, James? It might be right here. Alpha 54, but it's now just carries that one to the side. It's a good defensive touch. And Alpha, I mean, he made that stop, was going for a backboard bounce, but Team Liquid able to make that read. Airborne again, double tap pass. No, he lays off. Verdosa not there in time, and now we might see a counterattack. Oski tries to pop it up, but it looked like there was a bit of miscommunication there. I mean, Alpha 54, he's, started, he's picking up where he left off last regional. He's, he's certainly putting his hand up right now, James, for... Well, when you look at the MVP of Europe, you feel like it's reserved for Vatira, but in terms of best of the rest, that's Alpha 54 right now. And Alpha, and he has been at the top for a while. It's kind of hard to imagine that Alpha now becoming one of the more veteran players. We know what he's capable of. Alpha trying to get back these upper echelons and I think if you've seen their recent results seems like they are there now but can they stay there we'll find out another big stop from Alpha Alpha is really leaving it all out there defensively oh, it's fantastic to see his resurgence I mean we know how good he's been ever since Savage back in the Dreamhack days that's a throwback James to, to 2019 when he was this new kid on the block, the the young French lad with mechanics. What and then that, I that saw Alpha, him. Alpha Bluey and Devo squad, is that Alpha what that? Alpha Bluey Devo, yes, turned into FC Barcelona. But ever since, well, not say ever since then, but certainly last season, last split, we didn't see the Alpha of old. And, and I ran into him at Rotterdam as well, and he, and he nearly looked homeless. I thought, who is this guy? I had to double take, and it's the Alpha 54. And then you saw the resurgence, James, of how good he's been so far this split it is fantastic to see because he's a he's a wonderful lad and i love him the bitch and it shows you how much alpha wants it alpha really the heart of many teams he's been playing on and so far this game huge defensive stops but now vitality find themselves on the offense off the arc of the ceiling and down it leaks out to alpha 54 might be going for a solo play trying to get the dunk kicks out to the side for Dosen, dunked by Atal. Now passed oh. in, could be a goal, but you saw the line a bit off. It was a quality opportunity, just didn't work out for Team Liquid. Absolute goal fest here, game number one, James. And I was gonna say who's gonna break the deadlock. This often happens, you've got two mechanical teams and sometimes both of them are just hesitating. And Chronic might get a double touch over the top. There's panic stations here for Vitality. But no follow-up from Liquid. They do survive. They live to fight another day. Alpha. Down now, Oski. Flip reset potentially no goes for the air dribble over. Fake that flip reset. Faded in the defender, was able to get it by one. Ooh, and almost. Oh, he just gets oh. smacked out of the way. No chance of a play here. A Chronic with just a pop over the top, but it's all Vitality now. Size them. We love a little joint. I'm sure they Well, not on that side. I was thinking Stumpy and Cole would love that, but they are Team Liquid fanboys, James. They, they're really they're just a bit biased, I reckon. What do you reckon? I mean, I, I don't have to reckon. I you, Some things you just know. <laughs> some things you just know. And that's one of them, for sure. Fully agree with you, but Vitality are, are trying to. It feels like Vitality have a little bit more of a stranglehold on this game, and this could be a cast to curse. Sizen does get a little bit of a bump, and they're controlling the ball now. Here we go, Redosin over the top. Atto up in front, and this is what we like seeing from Liquid. You know their mechanics are on there. They're challenging instantly. They're always on the ball. And, you know, it can be inconsistent, James, but when this team is on mechanically, they, they can take down anyone. It's true, and I, and they 
had some, some pretty good mechanics so far, but overall, defensively, each team making stops. We've seen a few. Oh, uh, well, that one rolling, rolling back. <laughs> Fortunately, it wasn't rolling very fast. But we've seen uh, just not that many opportunities from either side. The defense, it's just, it's been lockdown defense. And it's just, as, again, it just feels like when you've got, it's almost the respect that both teams give each other in these sort of matchups where you have so much offense on both sides that often you see these sort of nil all games, these overtime low scoring affairs because there's just so much respect for the Chronic's gonna open it up and Team Liquid, I'll get the first one. And Oski, nice pass there to a Chronic. Verdosin was waiting for the shot. Verdosin even having boost on that play, which is so well hit, couldn't stop it. What a shot, top shelf. Team Liquid take game number one, but it was a tight one. Mm, almost almost a goal out of nothing there, really. It was obviously 11 shots there. They, they had the pressure, they had the shots, but seemingly a counter-attack vitality caught their third man a little bit under the ball and well leaf it was mm -hmm. all team liquid there to get the job done yeah i mean it took a while to get there but i mean at this result vitality's chances are still for that number one spot still still alive uh they might not be in luck for that three two score line as williams resolve does look to be to handling their match of much delight uh, decently well so far. They've already got a win in that first game there. Um, Solary finally having to bounce back against Saw uh, right now, and then uh, Carmen Corp doing their normal stuff. Uh, you know, they're just they're, they're getting dubs. There was one result I was looking at, and I'm now I'm forgetting what it was that I was going to tell people to go watch, and I can't remember. Oh yeah, Ox Oxygen German Amigos. German Amigos had a struggle to start their day, and now of course they decide that they're going to start winning against Oxygen, taking game one and winning in game two. So, go watch that one and see if German Amigos can pull it back. Thank you for the update, Lee. Why is he telling Why is he telling them to leave us and go watch well, another series? Ladies and gentlemen, if I, you want I a was, series, stay here. Don't go anywhere. I was going to ask the same thing, but I don't think we'd get an answer out of him. Not a straight one. Well, I don't... Here's the thing. It's too much of a good thing it can give you heartburn. So like what? J James and CJ. It's too much. <laughs> oh, oh, so that's what you go for. I ask for an example and you say us. Yeah, no, your example is something too good that we can't have too much of it. Yeah, I'm saying other than us. What, what is that? Because I, you know, give me cookies. I'll eat those until I'm so full I can't, you know? Yeah, but you're not going to enjoy it. So what? What? <laughs> Who, well, how are you supposed I love cookies, man. I'll enjoy it all the way to the end. All right. Hey, you are. You can have my extra cookie. I don't want the heartburn. I'll see if anyway. Vitality has heartburn <laughs> after this one. They've been uh, fighting to get out of their own end. They have not scored yet. Seen a few instances where Vitality has gone for the solo play rather than that infield pass. We haven't seen much connection here on the Vitality side. Meanwhile, that uh, passing play from Team Liquid sealed the deal in overtime. Just need the floodgates to open here for... Vitality. You feel like when they get that first goal on the board, they can start rolling, but still liquid. They're making the most of these opportunities and outpacing them to the ball. Alpha 54 in a little bit of trouble there backwards, but they do get out of trouble and now get a chance to attack, but there's just the liquid. They're just spreading the pitch and they're denying all sorts of pressure here. This mm. could be the opportunity, oh, but the demo comes out and the other way. <laughs> we were expecting an infield pass here, and the ball did not get hit off the backboard much at all, and it actually resulted in a double demo and an immediate counter. An instance where you think Vitality might have a passing play into the mid, it literally blew up in their faces, CJ. It makes perfect sense. Just get rid of that last man, and, and you just completely nullify the passing play there from Vitality. And that's it's almost a two goal swing there, James. It's such an opportunity for it Vitality is. to score, and it goes straight down the other end. You're expecting more of a separation on that infield pass, but it was right along the goal line. And then I think CJ, the attacking players, had tunnel vision on that ball. They just lost track of where Team Liquid was and they paid for it with those demos. It's easy to do when you see that goal, that beautiful, you just want to go for a commit all your resources and it's exactly ball what vitality. It, 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 it really is, James, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I've got a lot of theories about the ball being life and 
right now. Vitality, they're not finding it in the back of the net, and that's the main thing. Uh, Oski looking for the far post just off. Another demo from Atto. Pinch there from a chronic off Alpha's hood. Ties in trying to get it upfield, but Oski denies it. Oski has been lobbing those balls up at the midfield for his teammates, stopping the attacks. Rock solid defense. Oh. What was this? Redosin punishes Team Liquid for that bounce off the backboard. He's picking up where he left off from Regional 1. Ceiling reset over the top. Atto can't do anything. And Redosin gets the first goal on the board of the series so for Vitality. And what a way to do it. So perfect. Redosin uh, not only getting that wonderful touch off the backboard, but so gracefully landing on the ceiling. He had a little bit of boost left, didn't really even have to use it. His car control was so exact, so precise. Massive goal there for Vitality and Redosin. Oh, almost a play there. Atto looking like Seiko back in Regional 1. Couldn't quite get the touch. And now Vitality get opportunities. They're pushing forward and Redosin's looking. He's hunting for those demos. Here's a play off the ceiling. You're crying. He's going to get the flip, Atto. It was almost the double fake, James. I'll fake it. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there, but it, I feel like it oh, should have been something. Moving. Oh, oh, my dude, gosh. What don't is this tell me he, Don't tell me he disconnected oh. midair because he oh, had the flip. God. He was off the ceiling. He had the perfect shot. Uh, no, it was, it was a good play. It was a good play. The disconnect did not come out till that uh, that very last moment. A chronic was was in rotation. And it, it's a shame. The Somebody in chat, uh, let me check who it was. Atto, or Atto said that the game crashed for a chronic mm. and a chronic was in rotation to go for that shot off the backboard. So that is a devastating disconnect there for a chronic. The team liquid had the pressure. You saw the, uh, the little snake charmer move CJ where you have two players up. You're not sure who's going to take the shot and that almost worked out. So wow. unreal. So close. Leaf, tell us what's going on around the grounds. Hit us up. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I can do this kind of stuff. Williams Resolve, match point right now. Uh, end point, our match point, 2-0 uh, over Sonics. The German Amigos continue uh, quickly ramping up here at the end of their group stage against Oxygen 2-0. They won their game 3-0, I believe it was, against Oxygen. So they're shutting Oxygen down uh, pretty well. Then you have Carmine Corp. They're at 2-0 on their match point against G1 as well. And Solarine Sa going back and forth with their matchup. So, oh, Quadrant, also 2-0 over Moist. So this final round is just uh, almost 3 0s across the board, actually. BDS is also on a 2-0 against Tundra. So, yeah, th th this final round, everyone's just like, let's just get the matches done and get the bracket, it, it, it seems to be. So let me get this straight. If, if BDS win... And Quadrant win. They're both two and ones, but Quadrant have the head to head, so they'll go number one. Wow. What a group. Moist could be in trouble there in that group. They beat Tundra, so they'll be safe. It's okay. They're safe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I usually leave that stuff up, up to Gibbs, so I'm glad that you were able to do the, the math real quick here. But this is exactly why, James, I told people to go make sure other streams are up too. They could be watching some Rocket League. Well, are oh. you saying that you're 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 uh, getting these players to disconnect? Is that I, what you're uh, telling yeah, me? Yeah, it's all collusion. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Leaf is a technological person. I wouldn't put it past him, CJ. Hackermans. He's uh, he's a man of many talents, which is why we're very lucky to have him here. Just covering all the matches, hosting. What a man, what a superstar. But speaking of superstars, Alpha 54 is going to fly straight past that. How are not you not going to anything. start with Redosin after that last shot? Well, well yeah, yeah, I probably have done him an injustice I talk, there. talk was... about superstar plays. That was that was the superstar play of the series. It was, and th there haven't been too many, James, if I'm going to be honest here. I know it is only game <laughs> number two, but it hasn't exactly been the most high-scoring game. It's been quite a tactical affair, which is... Again, it's interesting. You, you feel like you get two mechanical teams, they're just going to go no. absolutely crazy, but often it goes the other way, and we are seeing some tactics there off the post. Not quite the angle he needed. And that was one of the most uh, tactical opportunities that we saw Vitality have. They had the ball, plenty of possession in space. They went for that passing play, but ended up just booming it off the backboard. 
We have seen now instances where both teams have gotten two demos back to back on the opposing team. Liquid scored on their opportunity. Oski looking for a pass into the middle. It comes. Our Chronic will keep the ball up. Last chance for Team Liquid unless Vitality can bring it down full field. Oh, just Rodothan. gets carried away. What a touch there. Little, little pinch off the backboard and he got overtime. And those zero second threats are a, uh, a real threat. Just to ask. Well, I don't even want to say it. I'm going to respect Gary G's wishes. I'm not talking about NRG, so I won't talk about how G2 scored that zero second goal. And mm -hmm. Feels like you're trying to talk about it though, James. I'm saying I'm not going to talk about it. Almost seems like you've you've really highlighted it even more by saying that. I'm just going to be quiet. Well, I'll talk then if you want. Our tower is going to get the ball forward. Look, uh, Liquid, uh, uh, when you can see the goal like that, it's 1-1 right now, but Redos and Ceiling, sometimes you have to just accept that those goals are going to happen. Well played. You were too good on the day. And Liquid, I feel like they still have a lot of control in this game, number two here. And an opportunity to go to oh, uh, an opportunity to top the group after what I'd say is probably a disappointing regional one for for a team that we're expecting to be sort of number two, number three in Europe. And they want to bounce back pretty hard here in this second regional. You know, I think you're right, CJ, but I also feel like uh, Team Liquid. Hold oh, on! Oh my goodness, this man! Redosin! <laughs> oh. These are two bangers from Redosin. He gets the flip reset. Perfect read. He had the he got his flip off the ceiling the first goal. This guy is truly a superstar. Game two was a one-man show, and Redosin picking up. We're looking for Alpha 54, but it's Redosin. This man has been leveling up regional after regional. And here we see him not almost a almost thousand up points. A thousand. Seven saves. We didn't even talk about his defense. And then he finished it up with a flip reset off the backboard, double touch off the sidewall, should I say. Team Vitality get one back. Leafex, yeah. we have a series. Mm, yeah, we do have a series. Uh, and I got to admit, Rudolph's looking pretty good, you know, and I may be a little concerned. Not fully concerned with my prediction, but maybe a little bit concerned if he keeps that up. So I'm going to have to go unplug his computer again to make sure that that doesn't, <laughs> keep, that doesn't keep up. Uh, across the board, BDS do finish off their series 3-0 against Tundra. So they have they have finished uh, their sweep. Williams Resolve finished their sweep much delight. So a 3-2 victory for uh, Vitality here will not result in a number one seed for them. They will have to now finish off the series with uh, wins across the board. Thank you. So that was a very important win there, CJ, for Vitality. Basically, mm -hmm. that with number one on the line, getting that win. And um, you, you have to give huge props to Redosa. He was nutty that game. It was, like you said, a one-man show. He, he did absolutely everything for that team. And, I mean, that just... When, when you've got a play like Alpha 54, you know, get, 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 get bottom of the scoreboard, basically... I mean, that's, that's got to be fantastic for Vitality, knowing you've still got that in the back pocket. Size is trying to do it as well off the sidewall. Alpha 54 can't finish. And Dosen's just going to put a soft shot on net almost again, but this time it was Size and trying to level up here for Vitality. Oski to a chronic, a chronic shot off target. Size in, rolling it down for Dosen. They can control the ball, trying to speed back to it for a 50. Kicks back off the backboard. Alpha. Doesn't make contact now. It's a 1v1 situation. Oski the flick, and it's perfect. That miss from Alpha at the midfield doomed his teammate Sizen. And now Team Liquid out to a quick lead. Perfect flick indeed, James. What a touch there. Gets the one-on-one, -on -one and it came from an Alpha 54 miss. Second man in midfield there, just couldn't get the touch, and it left Vitality exposed on the back end. It was Oski. What a touch there. What a flick. You've got to make the most of those one-on-ones, I feel, as well, James. Yeah, and it's, and it's not of easy to get that flick just right. You know, it's, it's so easy to flick it high and put it crossbar down and out or not get enough height to beat the defender. Oski made it look so easy. And you just can't forget, CJ, that uh, Team Liquid 
They don't need to win this series. They just need to win one more game to lock in the top spot in the group. Mm, just make it close, I say. Just, you know, they, they, they almost a, it could be a bad mindset, though. You know what I mean? If you're, if you're nearly not thinking about the win. So I don't think Vitality would be thinking about that for one second. They want to take this series and get some momentum moving into tomorrow. Ties in. The boom out. Touch from Redosin. I don't even know where Redosin's getting these reads from. <laughs> Pulling him out of the hat. He just, out of nowhere, he's, the ceiling is his best friend at the moment, and he's he's making it work here. He's off the sideball again, the fake, but just the presence is enough. Atto didn't quite get the quality touch there. Had an opportunity, perhaps go for the corner double. Double's Doesn't quite make it work. The Chronic. Trying to boom it up field. Infield pass. Looked like that's what was happening, but no one from Vitality was there. No one was even close. Size in. Now a double commit from Vitality. For oh, not he's again. just so fast. He'll make anything work. Backward pass, but Sizing gets demoed. He was too close to the play. Now the break is on. Atto. Going low. Now the 50 high. A Chronic up, but Alpha dusts a Chronic. Oski, however, defending the backboard. Yeah, fantastic play from Liquid there. There was a chance. It was. It's almost counter attacks. These teams, when they're playing so tactical, James, one demo can just completely open it up for one of the sides, and we almost saw it there. Connie's going to be awkward for this touch, but gets the speed up. Sizen was lurking. Now, the counter attack. Oski's going to be able to put that one to the side. Not much value there, and the pitch coming out. This could be Don't dangerous. Spin. Can the corner create it? He does. What a touch. And that was so wild. Defensively, Radosin decided it, instead of hitting that ball out, he was on his own post and still managed to keep the ball close and force the ball out. Radosin all around on all sides of the ball has been the impact player for Vitality. We'll see if he can step up here as Team Liquid are about a minute away from locking in that top spot in the group. Regardless of what Vitality does, even if they win that series 3-2, it won't do much for them. They certainly want to take this one, though. I think they want to take the series, lock in that top spot. I know they can do it in a game five, but they want to do it with style here. Team Liquid and Vitality, they're starting to get desperate. We saw some pre-jumps from Alpha. They're starting to double commit a little bit, and I don't know if Liquid's going to be able to give them that window. They look to be pushing forward and not sending all of the troops at the same time. They're trying to hold on to this 1-0 lead. We've got 36 seconds. What can Vitality do? We've seen Vitality. Oh, hold on. This one wide open. Oski picks up his second. And that feels like it's it for Vitality. Oski, great second touch there. He got bumped a little bit, but it wasn't enough to get him off the trail. Yeah, almost a situation there where Vitality, they're, they're sending all the troops forward. They're not quite always rotating back. They're trying to play, you know, a bit of a risky game to secure that equalizer, but... It went the other way, and Oski again gets his second goal on the board, and looks like it's going to be Team Liquid's group, James. It does, and this will actually solidify the entire group. And so if you uh, need to go gra <laughs> grab a snack, or you know, maybe we can... <laughs> Don't say that. This is everything to play uh, for. We're going to see mechanics on display. No pressure from either side in this next game. When you say no pressure, you mean that there's no, no reason to... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're right. You're no, we'll, we'll see it. It's going to be the best plays we'll ever see. Because Team Liquid will have nothing to worry about. Neither will Vitality. They'll be making it through to the next round. And be making it to the playoff section of the event. But this does lock in the group. Team Liquid taking down that number one spot. Williams Resolve will be the second seed. And uh, Team Vitality, they're going to be rounding out the group uh, in that third place spot, CJ. That's crazy to think that one game separates topping the group versus coming third in the group. And Vitality, I mean, they're gonna have to do it the tough way if they wanna get top two again after that first regional showing. But Leaf, yeah. I know you're here to tell us all the beautiful things about the other groups. If that's what, that what you want, you know, I don't I don't wanna like- Well, that's what we know. expect. That, that's yeah. actually the only reason that we sort of bring you in. Yeah, to, that is, to try that is just, that's, that's that's my whole purpose. Job. <laughs> what do I do? You pass butter. All right. Well, I'll read some numbers here. Uh, Carmen Court G1 might be an exciting match to watch. I get this is why I'm telling people to get those other streams open. 
They're in a game five right now. G1 might be pulling that back. They'd be a reverse sweep uh, for G1. And we also have Oxygen German Amigos sitting in a, into a game five as well. So mm. uh, lots of uh, exciting matches. None of the rest are complete. We still have Sonic's Endpoint. They're in game four. We have a Solar Risa going into game five as well with the 2-2. So lots of exciting matches uh, around the board. Make sure those screens are open. Make sure those streams are open, but make sure you're still hanging out with myself and James Watt here because we're oh, yeah. about to see a mechanical masterclass from both of these sides. As we said, no pressure, James Bot. Not nothing to play for. No pressure on either of these sides. And this is where we're going to see the best of both teams. Alpha 54. Well, he's angry because he didn't top the group. And he's trying to make a statement. Yeah, now, I mean, now's the time to pad your stats. If you're, if, you, if, you're, if you're trying to get that player rating up, trying to pad those stats. I mean, we do keep track of career stats, so it's not a bad idea. And also, I was going to say, when Leaf was talking about all the different streams, helped Dazarin learn this just a couple days ago. It might have even been last night, but if you middle click a link, it opens a new tab. You don't have to right click and open new tab. You just hover over it, use the middle click, boom, new tab. Do you know that? And that is why he's paid the big bucks, ladies and gentlemen. That's James Bot there coming at you with some tech support. For your and then, and then when you need to close the tab, you can middle click the tab itself. And it closes it. I, you know what? I'm going to start up a um, a, a tech <laughs> show where I give you. Some, I personally thought that was basic knowledge of. <laughs> no, dude. Oh, yeah, I'm, better, I, I'm sure there. I just made life better for for yeah. thousands. Let's yeah, let's let's, let's take it to Twitch chat, James. Just can we just get like a, 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 can we get a one in chat, ladies and gentlemen? If you didn't know that and you've learned something new, because this could really be a new segment here for James. What a new a new calling. I just, I, a shortcut is just that, man. It's a shortcut. It gets you where you're going faster. Don't we all want that? Well, here in case you accidentally close. Look at this. Look at the one. The wall. <laughs> People in chat say this is actually amazing to find out. So I look. I was laughing at you, James, but I take it all back. Yeah, I, I, I really appreciate like what you're doing for the community. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just trying to help out. Do what I can. Especially when uh, when this game is purely for the stats. You know, this uh, what better time will we have? Yeah, I mean, if, if you've just tuned in and, you, and you're wondering why we're talking about middle clicking tabs to close them, it's because Team Vitality, uh, oh, sorry, let's go the other way. Team Liquid have secured first seed in this group by just purely by winning two games, by taking it to game five or winning the series. They'll be number one in the group and Vitality have all but secured third seed. They can't go any higher right now. So right now we're kind of just hanging out, playing this game and listening to Leafex give us some things around the board and yeah, now is the best time tips. to bring in Leaf X. I feel like this is his opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Like what's happening? We're watching this series. What's going on in the one? Do you, do you want scores or more tech tips? Where, 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 where are we taking this podcast? <laughs> I think I think <laughs> we got to pace ourselves. Especially, okay. you know, okay. one tip a day. Yeah, we got to out there watching or something. Right. We from psychotics. We gotta you know gotta be doing our job. <laughs> We gotta we gotta save some for the course too, so people sign up, right? We can't give them all away. Uh, we have uh, basically the same thing. A lot of game fives across the board. That K Corp G1 Solar Risa, Moist Quadrant, uh, Oxygen German Amigos Sonics Endpoint. Game fives uh, across the board here. Team Liquid Vitality is the the only one that's currently not sitting in in a game five. So a lot of exciting matches. Uh, middle click all of them to open up all six tabs. <laughs> And, and watch as much Rocket League as possible. What if you don't have a middle mouse? Oh, that's a, you're gonna last off. Well, you uh, you have to do more steps. You just you're you're living a worse life. You get a get a scroll wheel. All right. Well, we just got the call from uh, production that says, "Do your darn job." <laughs> All right. We got the we got the message. We got the message. Thank you. <laughs> but here we are, though. It's it's one zero here. Vitality. They're trying to, I guess. Just earn a bit of respect back, but Atto, he wants to end this series right here, right now. He it gets the equalizer here on Utopia. In Liquid, I mean, they're one goal away, they're one game away from locking out this series three to one. And that'd be pretty impressive against the team Vitality that, well, you know, we're sort of looking at them now, James, as a top two, top three team in Europe. Mm -hmm. And they locked in the, the at least top three in the group. You know, that's going to help them get to the next stage. But CJ, let's play a game. All right, we, we pick who we think the next player to score is. Chat, you can play along too if you want. 
Imaginary points if you win. I'm going to stay redosant. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an obvious pick. I, I dare say there's a one in six chance here, James. And I, I think I there's think better than one in six chance after seeing Redosin. Uh, you know, you, you, I can see where you're coming from here, but I just think Team Liquid, they've got the momentum. They've won the game. I think you've got to be looking at their side. And Are you stalling? Just say a player. Okay, I'm going to say Ostia. He scored two in the last game, got the winner. I think he's going you, to get the you winner. You say here. my pick is obvious and you go Ostia. Yeah, obviously, you know, anyone can score at the end of the day. It's Rocket League, and we don't really know what's going to happen. We try and sound smart. Well, it's hard to sound smart with an Australian accent, but we do our best <laughs> over here. And <laughs> Just disc yourself. All right, well, <laughs> a chronic. Will it be a chronic getting the goal flip reset? Nothing doing. Team Liquid on the assault. Oski flip reset. Pass over. There it is. Front of net. There was another chance. That's help. Can't do it. All lobbed in front of net. Redosin getting a double tap down. And Team Liquid will let this one go to overtime. So hopefully one of us will be right. Someone in chat said first killer, which that has no chance of being right. So we're beating somebody. You never know, James. There's always a chance. That's what I say. So good luck to that that person in chat. But right now, I think it's going to be Oski here. Team Liquid, they've started well off the kickoff. The ball is just pinched out, giving you a little bit of breathing room for vitality. but. I mean, that breathing room, James, it's only got to put them third seed in the group no matter what. Whereas Team Liquid, they're trying to make a statement. They're trying to get some momentum moving into Saturday. They're going to miss out on this fourth round straight through to the quarterfinals. And that's a that's a pretty good, uh, I guess, resurgence of, of, I don't know what you want to say, this team that, you know, they would look so good at the major. They didn't quite finish or start too hot here in the first split, but... I think they bounced back pretty strong here. And a win against Vitality, a 3-1, would just show that this Team Liquid roster, well, they want to be there. They want to be right up at the top of Europe. And also, CG, you can't lose uh, sight of the fact that this is such a young team. This is a team built for future success, especially if they stick together. We've seen you know teams like G2 stick together, and sometimes you have a few ups and downs, but G2 making two separate World Championship Grand Finals Will Team Liquid be able to attain those heights? I think if they stick together long enough and they continue to develop their skills, I would not be surprised. The reset pass attempt from Oski, but CJ, I, I think many people would agree that this Team Liquid squad does have the magic. Yeah, they, they've got a little bit of the sauce, James, I agree. And I, I, I don't know how confident I am in terms of, I guess, I, you know, this roster has the ability to stay together for years on end. Here's an opportunity now for each other, Chronic. Puts it away, and if they keep playing like this, James, well, I don't see any reason for this roster to change. Team Liquid, well, they'd already guaranteed number one seed, but they do it in style here with a 3-1 over Team Vitality and Leaf X. That is, that's Group B. That's Group B just locked in, yeah. and we did not pick a Chronic at all to score the goal. So, well. You also didn't pick Team Liquid to win this. That's true. Way, way, way to go, Leaf. Way to, way to set yourself up. Pat yourself on the back, shake your own hand. Anything else you want to say about how smart you are? Uh, no, I think everything it's just implied at this point. So I, I've gotten my two predictions before this rock. <laughs> <laughs> it did not go well. Uh, we do have some results rolling in uh, right now. Uh, G1 finished their reverse sweep against Carmen Court to win 3-2 in that matchup. Uh, and then we also have, uh, let's see, it's Sonics finishing their victory, their reverse sweep, I believe, as well against Endpoint. And now we're taking a look at Quadrant versus Moist, which sit in game five. This is the game. This is massive right here. We've got, obviously, it's game five. Moist trying to reverse sweep here. Quadrant need to win to win the group. So they want number one seed. Everything everything on the line right now. And we got overtime here on Champions Field. This is field. just insane to me. It's, it's, it's this match, if, if Quadrant wins, then, then they're in. They're first, actually. They're first yep. place. They, but they, if they lose they to are. be to be dead last, that that is unbelievable. Everything, everything on the line right now. So, a little bit more than what we had on the line in that. Yeah, last this game. It went from literally nothing <laughs> to literally everything to play for. 
I, I love this format though. I know that, you know, people complain about game diff, head to head, the groups, how close it is, but it almost gives that that finals feeling and it's only day one. That's what I love about it. Uh, it, it is, and I just, I feel like, um, you know, every format is going to have its challenges, but uh, these are the situations that you also get. So sometimes, yeah, you have those situations where it's, at the end of a series doesn't mean much, but in these situations where it means everything and each <gasps> show will take the house for Team Quadrant. What Can a he... play to end it, the passing. And EXO, clutch play. You've got to think as well for, for BDS. I mean, th they drop the first series to Quadrant and then look flawless after that. They go two mm -hmm. and one and you're thinking, is this BDS's regional? They can get number one in the group. And it's Quadrant of all teams to upset them and take that one spot. And that eliminates Tundra. So Tundra now is out of it and they will not be playing in that playoff portion of the event. And then uh, we also saw Saw take down Solary. Solary went 0-3 in their Group A over there. That was uh, not a solid result for them. And then we saw Oxygen Esports complete their reverse sweep against German Amigos to take that victory away. Uh, a final hope for German Amigos to get another win there, but they aren't able to do it. And we do round off our groups. We got to find out who's going to be sitting where and playing who in the first round of the playoff bracket. That's right. We got one more round to go. The playoff bracket right after the break. mentality is very important i think without it you you lose a lot you can look at bs right now i think that mentality is chalked and it went from world champions to almost up the bottom of the leaderboard it's like in my opinion it's all about the mentality if things were to go in the, in a bad trend it's the most important thing to uh, talk things over with the team so you can just completely reset don't let anything negative uh, from the past affect you and just go next Parts where this was useful for me was last winter uh, split when I was still with Dignitas. We found ourselves in the loser bracket after uh, round one, and we still we just completely reset, started playing our game, didn't focus on the past, and we made it all the way to the grand finals. Dignitas pulling a C9 on this rep. I definitely think it's important to be friends or at least not hate each other outside of the game. That keeps just the mentality in game as well, very supportive and you don't have to worry that much because you know you've, your friends got your back and you can make some mistakes. And it's just the environment is just not heavy at all and that makes you go free and play it even better. When you're a new player and you're struggling, just be positive. Everyone, even at the pro scene, has been in your same shoes. Uh, myself included, we've all had our times, if, even if you're struggling and ranked, we, we all tilt, we all have uh, sometimes some bad days, some good days, but stay positive and stay grinding and you'll get there eventually. Here is Jory as he can wake his team up right here, right now, he manages it, threads that needle home. Another week. 
We come near to the end of day one here of the European Cup and the winter split, but we do have to get through this round one of the playoff bracket. I'm Leaf, James Bond, and CJ will join me through the rest of the day. They don't have any choice. They're stuck here. Uh, they were told they have to, to keep hanging out. So this will be our hangout. We're going to watch uh, round one. But before we get that, let's see what happened on the last group stage there. Uh, what happened? Because uh, it was exciting across the board. Lots of game fives. You see that with Solary saw Solary, James not having the best of days. Uh, they went 0-3 in their group there. K Corp getting a little bit of surprise at the end of this. He's not the best of days. <laughs> Zero <laughs> three. <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, Solary they they uh, fell short last time. Um, they were in Group B with G1 Moist and Williams Resolve, and uh, they weren't able to make it out of groups that time. I think the the thing for solary is they are still making main event so that's uh be, being on the dance floor is a big deal unfortunately for them they weren't able to to get out of their group or get a win but uh still something positive to point to let's take a look at where the groups ended up here because if you were watching you should know where at least that group c ended up and we did watch uh liquid round out the top there uh, they didn't even need to win the series they just had to grab uh, two wins because williams resolve Got their victory over Much Delight. Looking good there. Quadrant, CJ topping their group. It's massive, and it just goes to show that if you can beat the right teams, the right series, then that head-to-head that -head game diff is huge because BDS, well, they finish with a, a bit of game diff, but with the seedings, with how it works out, it, it goes back to head-to-head, -to -head, and it was that 
quadrant win, James, over BDS, uh, that first series of the and, day that was everything. And it really can't be understated how important that series was because uh, for Team BDS and German Amigos, whoever wins that has to play Carmine Corp in the quarterfinals, which I think if you're uh, if you're paying attention to what's been going on lately, Carmine Corp looks almost unbeatable at times. So that is a very difficult first round matchup. Whereas mm -hmm. if you're Quadrant now, you're looking at this G1 Vitality matchup one, playing one of the winners of those. So that uh, that just goes to show you how important topping out in these groups really is. We do have our playoff bracket here. As you see, K-Corp Oxygen, Quadrant, Liquid, they all get a buy on through to tomorrow, to day two. They get to rest for, for the rest of the day, wait and see who their matchups are going to be. Round one here is going to be best of five, CJ, though. Uh, so it's a, not to, not the longest. You, you want to get those wins in early because uh, that match could be over early. Yeah, only best of five, but still massive matches, single elimination, and particularly this next matchup. We got G1. We've got some, firstly, some crackers here in round number one of the bracket, but mm -hmm. G1 Vitality, I mean, they haven't played each other yet. They Well, they didn't play each other in the first regional, should I say, and I mean, this is a danger game here. I know Vitality, they're going for top two, but they could, if they lose this, that's a nine to 12. That's a that's a massive difference in, in performance yeah. there. Let's well, start breaking the other, it down. On here. the other end, though, on the other end, CJ, Vitality, they're so hungry for that major. And if they can get some results here, they're pretty much, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say they're going to would lock it in, but it would be massive after making the grand finals last event to get top four even in this event would set them up so beautifully for a major appearance yeah. you know that they are going to be feeling that immense pressure right from the get-go well chat i need to know what you're thinking on this one one final match for the day day one here will come to a conclusion after our first round of the playoff bracket hashtags in the chat hashtag vit or hashtag g1 who's going to take this one we just saw vitality take a uh, take a, a beating there from team liquid but we'll see if they can bounce back into this first bracket it's a new matchup everything can change uh, or if g1's going to take it analysts i want to get your thoughts on this one uh i'm personally going to have to flop on this I, I was against vital in the last one but i do think they might be able to take it james is going the other way and i don't think you're going to have too hard of a stance to hold here i feel like a g1 picks not out of the blue uh, yeah, I, yeah, G1 people will, a lot of people will be thinking they're an underdog here, but mm -hmm. this is a very talented team. They also just reverse swept Carmine Corp. Uh, obviously, Carmine Corp, not as much to play for because they had that top group uh, spot locked mm -hmm. in. So, you know, cheapens it a little bit, but this is a, a real contender of a team. And what we saw from Vitality is they were struggling to get the infield passing plays going, uh, finding each other. We saw remarkable effort from Redosin last series for Vitality, but it's going to have to be a team effort to take down this G1 team. And I'm not sure I saw enough from Vitality to convince me in that last series against Team Liquid. Uh, look, I, I think Vi look Vitality are the favorites, but G1, they finished fifth to eighth in the first regional. They narrowly missed out on the last major. And now this could be a nine to 12 if they lose this. So I think the pressure is actually on G1 here. Vitality, they have that top two under their belt already. Uh, you know, not to defend the team I'm voting against here, but I do think again G1 has something to say coming off a victory against Carmine Corp. I mean, this this is this is a good bit of momentum they can carry into this next matchup here. Chat slightly on the side of James here with G1, so but that's actually a little surprising to me. Yeah, you thought but it'd be heavy vitality. Well, I'm not. A I thought it would be around those numbers, but in favor of vitality, especially considering the performance they put in last week. So. Twitch chat, I guess, is just smarter than I give them credit for. <laughs> Way to go, Twitch chat. We're in this I, together. I personally give Twitch chat a lot of credit. I'm always so... I'm not sure where you're getting that from, but the, we have an absolute series here, ladies and gentlemen. Forget about the last one where, you know, quickly it, it, it showed that Liquid, you know, they topped the group. It didn't mean too much. This is single Elim. We're in the bracket now, James. It is game on and everything to play for. Alpha. Had a few defensive stops last game, but we saw him look for some infield passing plays that didn't work Not out. Touch. And we already see some passing plays work out, this time utilizing the backboard. Mark getting this ball out into the middle. Sizen was trying to stop it, wanted to prevent that ball from leaking out, but it was a perfect hit from Mark and a cleanup from Atomic. Yeah, Mark just had so much time there, and it was one of those situations where well, Vitality had gone to panic. They're expecting Mark to shoot, but 
All he had to do with no boost was tap it off the wall and it was an absolute freebie there, a tap in. And G1, will you speak about Vitality, James? They didn't look as crash hot as what we probably saw last regional against Liquid. And again, G1, they're taking advantage of that. Oh, there was a nice infield passing look, but it was sniffed out. Rodosin not able to get the shot now on the rebound. Atomic defending the backboard. Size in first touch will go in field. And Mark was there at the drop of a hat. Now a bump play. Rodosin dodging multiple bumps and gets the 50 downfield. Three on no, no one for a moment. <laughs> Finally, the rotation comes back. That bounce off the corner. Could have been a, a little better. And now on the other end, this is a back and forth thing. End to end Rocket League right now. Rodosin defending the 1v3. He just had to pinch it middle, James, and he sent it to the moon. They, I'll tell you what, that is that is the path of the Milky Way, that pinch, and not what they wanted for Vitality. End to end Rocket League, counter attacks back and forth. This is what we love to see. Uh, it looked like for a, a brief moment, CJ, that it was going to be a counterattack goal. So that is a tough break there for Vitality. Mark can't get a touch on it. Rodosin has sizing up field. Flip reset pass is broken up by Dorito. Mark, oh, that's a risky hit. And that's going to result in a goal. Mark was going towards the middle of the field, but I don't know who he was aiming for. It looked like he was maybe trying to boom that over to Dorito, but Dorito was so far away. Yeah, it was the presence of Alpha 54. They're just forcing a touch from Mark by eight. Just sometimes, James, you just got to put a hand up. I know T Bates, that's his favorite quote, favorite saying. You just have to put some pressure on, send your car, send a bit of presence. And Mark by eight, he crumbled a little bit there. However, he was, I guess, left on a little bit of an island by his teammates. And here we go again, Radosin, free shot bar Ooh, down, follow up, up Sizen. Gets it away. Despite the hot start for G1, Vitality now taking the lead and the wheel's starting to fall off here for G1. And it all started with that play, you know, you called it out, Alpha, four checking hard, pressuring Mark and Mark maybe panic, panicking a little bit, not able to get the most ideal touch. Didn't have much time to think about it. And now another opportunity and Alpha sinks it. Three goals and how many seconds was this? It was, it's gotta be less than 20. Just another poor touch by Mark by eight. He had so much time there and he just threw it into the corner straight to straight to the Vitality offense. And Alpha 54 capitalizes twice now. It's been Mark by eight, not getting the touch that he needs. And I mean, you saw this a little bit last regional, James. Mark, a, a little bit suspect in defense. Well, in that, in that time, he was just trying to get a 50 and the 50 went about as bad as it could. Yeah, not great. Now the shot blocked out Dorito. Trying to control it. Hits it to size him, but Dorito's second effort. The reset. Stopped by Radosin. Mark. A lob it back down. Gives up possession to Alpha, who takes it into a dribble. Now Mark again off the sidewall over to Dorito. Dorito double tap ball, but Radosin catches it and dribbles it along the corner before getting challenged by Atomic. Now Alpha booming it downfield, relieving quite a bit of pressure, letting Vitality regroup. There's just a, there's an offense right now for G1, but it feels like Vitality have most avenues covered. Not too much happening on the orange side of the field. And Radosin almost had a passing option there, doesn't find Sizen, but the demos and the fake play there from Sizen relieves a little bit of that pressure and allows Vitality to keep attacking. Here's Alpha, gets the touch, almost the dunk. Sizen's got to be able to grab that corner boost. And here they go again off the ceiling. Vitality, this offense is it's relentless. Mark with a pinch up, Sizen. Lob down to Alpha, who put it into the middle. Radosin didn't go. Sizen trying to pick up small pads as Alpha booms it up to Radosin. Radosin denied by Dorito. Sizen up off the ceiling. Dorito with the catch, the Ooh. flick, it's too high. Rebound Ooh. is blocked aside. Radosin, that was such an important touch there defensively, prevented the rebound shot. Radosin was in massive trouble there, but finds a way out again. We saw the 1v3 defense before where it felt like the world was against him, but he just keeps finding a way out. And now 20 seconds left, Vitality with that two goal lead. I mean, this is the best we've seen them so far, James. The last series against Liquid wasn't quite the Vitality we saw last regional, but this is looking a lot like it. 
Redirect attempt by Atomic still blocked by Alpha as the final seconds tick away. Alpha taking that off. Mark by eight's nose. Vitality. They did not start this game off with a goal. They had to come from behind. It was a nice start from G1, but then in a matter of about 20 seconds or so it seemed, Vitality put three in. It was it was back to back to back goals for Vitality. The defense yep. falling apart. You mentioned Mark. Uh, he, he was kind of playing a, a key role in uh, at least two of those plays. We saw him go for that quick clear that resulted in the first goal. Then the 50-50 uh, that pinched out to the middle. Tough plays. Not, not, not the best plays there. It was, it, it was some defensive mistakes from G1, which is not what you want to see from that team. Usually they do have that defense on lockdown, but Leaf, bracket play, single elimination now. Yeah. How are the game ones looking? They are looking like games. Uh, Moist got their first game against... <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. It's the end of the day. Uh, then we have uh, Saw getting their victory over Wilms Resolve. Saw is on something today. So if, if there's another series, you only have two monitors, you only have two matches up, have this one up. I won't tell you to leave. James will get mad, but also have that one up because uh, it, it'll be exciting to see if we can get Saw in a, in a quarterfinals. That'll be fun. And BDS looks like they're getting things under control here. They get their game one against Germany Migos. So uh, that Saw match is, is the one I'm keeping my eye on. Though. That's it. That's, well, it looks that's, like, that's well, thank you. Thank you, Lee, for, for the for the update. Um, we'll be getting back into this match in just a moment. Had a slight delay, but it's Vitality and G1 Series back underway. G1, they scored first, CJ. They they were looking good out of the gate, but they started to sputter. Yeah, they, they looked strong, and then it was only downhill from there. So let's see how game number two goes, James. I don't, I don't want to say that G1 should start a little bit slower to try and see if the result can change, because you always want to get the first goal on the board, but... Vitality just responded so well from that deficit. And I mean, if they can continue that, this is this is starting to look rough here. I know it's it, it feels like, a, you know, a, almost a quarterfinal matchup, bracket play, single elimination, but it's only best of five, James. You don't want to go two goals down or two games yeah. down. Yeah, this, uh, the best of five really does make a difference. You know, after that second loss, you really start to feel the pressure. So you know that G1 already could be in trouble. There's a miss from Atomic. Mark, lob it up. Atomic looking for Dorito. No, Mark will cut in, but he's out of boost. So Dorito will have to come in, running on small pads. Flick path to the middle. Rebound out. Mark trying to get control of the ball. Couldn't do it. And now Alpha will pick up possession. Pinched out to Sizen. Launches it to the corner. Alpha can't get the 50. Sizen also beat on the 50. Atomic 50s Radosin and G1 are now in Vitality's half. Dorito for the pop up. Atomic forward now. Here we go. Sizen does get the touch. Alpha 54. He's been so solid on the defensive end, James. It has been the, the offensive powerhouse Alpha that we know and love from the last regional, but he's certainly been consistent here for Vitality. Here are chances now. G1 pushing forward and Perhaps better signs here for G1. They didn't get that early goal, James, but they appear to be a little bit more solid. The bump might come out, but there are numbers back now. What can Radosin do? Can he get the flip reset? Does have it over the top. Dorito's oh. in a lot of trouble. Sizen <laughs> can't get the angle, and maybe they live to fight another day. I mean, they, they did live on that play, but it was scary. Radosin just off. Now rebound out. Nobody's there from G1 to take the shot. Still Dorito. We'll have enough space to at least pop it up, but the play fizzles out. I mean, it, oh, Vitality was so confused. They they were in net saying, you go, no, you go, because G1, they just, there was no one there to create that offense, which really caught Vitality by surprise there, but they do get away unharmed here, and now G1 get an opportunity. Atomic's downfield, he's looking for a touch. Shot on net, Alpha again in defense, carries that one away, and goes straight down the other end, but Dorito spawns off the demo and saves it. Dorito, shot towards net. Mark trying to beat the defense. Sizen perfectly positioned to handle that backward pass attempt. There's a block. Verdosen awkward. Rebound out to Dorito. The 50 cleared off the goal line by Sizen. Just so cool, calm and collected there with Sizen. Just bunted the ball to the corner. 
And here we go again. Vitality, they've been defending strong, but what can they do down the other side of things? It's going to be Atomic, however, to take it away for G1. Does get blocked out. Marks crept, almost gets bumped. Shot maybe from Alpha misses, but here's a goal. Sizen puts it away. Vitality. Off the offense from Alpha 54, get the first on the board. And, I, and it all started out with Alpha reading that high hit, destroying the midfield presence from G1 and threatening the shot, leading to that rebound opportunity. Alpha doing work, didn't get credited for a goal, but it was Alpha's work that paved the way. And it was a fake as well. Alpha just... Oh, here's another open net opportunity. Oh, Alpha wow. 54 gets the dunk out of nowhere. And third man issues again. Just too casual from Atomic. Poor first touch. Alpha 54 into the challenge. Vitality It's another one on the board. And Alpha's in their head. Alpha is in their head. It's, it's, that had a lot of similarities to the last goal where Alpha predicted the hit that G1 was going to make. It left them no time, no respect, and just rushed it. And it's going to result in a goal, and G1 is really struggling. This is going to be tough for them. But now, will they get on the board? Yes, they will. Atomic stabilizes, at least for the time being, and puts G1 back within one. They do get a goal almost out of nowhere, and it was the size and bump into also demoed on the way through. He was in a world of hurt in defense. G1 get one back off the kickoff with that pressure and perhaps a chance here. I was, I was just about to say, James, that uh, the start of the games are so strong for V1. Oh, sorry, V1. For G1, but then they just get this. This is EU. Sorry. And then they just get this sort of this red zone, this danger period. But they have found one back here. They have found a way back into this game. And there's a minute on the clock. A lot of time and Atomic almost off the own backboard for the equalizer. The bumps are coming out to read open. Oh. The shot was just wide. Mark wide. by eight could not get that thing on target. G1 had a perfect opportunity, James, but I want to come away with nothing. It looked like Mark had the, the space there to get that first touch and go for the shot. Now rebound out. Dorito goes for the infield pass and Atomic forced it wide. Back-to-back -back chances for G1 back to back misses under 30 seconds left to go g1 still trailing oh atomic just puts an absolute hole through the backboard there that's not where he wanted it tried to fire a top corner g1 now 15 seconds left can they get an equalizer can they avoid the 2-0 deficit here it's only a best of five that have to reverse sweep seven seconds what's going to happen here alpha 54 one-on-one -on -one with mark carries it up Three seconds left. Will the ball hit the ground? Dorito's going to get a chance over the top, but size and parries it. That ball is rolling around, James. And are we going to see it hit the deck? Dorito's trying to keep it up. Alpha's there. Drops it on Atomic's head. Ball still in the air, but Alpha 54 downfield should be able to kill this. Oh, Willie, it's still up. Ball's in the air. Atomic's going to get it. Redosa coming through. And now Mark by eight on the counter attack. Gets blocked out by size and Dorito doesn't get it. It finally hits the deck. The Vitality get their second game. Take a breath, please me. Yeah, that was well done by size and they're positioning his car to force it down into the ground. And G1, they had moments, CJ, to get back into it. They just were not able to step up. Now Vitality on match point. And that has to be a bit intimidating for G1, this Vitality team surging. Alpha having a fantastic game. Both goals coming from his aggression at the midfield, jumping on those challenges right away. Now Vitality in a firm position. It's it's almost this this lapse leaf in, in, in G1 at the moment where they just have mm -hmm. these 30 seconds a minute where they can see two or three goals. And that's the series. That's the game right there. And... Right now, G1, they're not quite finding a way to combat that that lapse in concentration, that red zone that I talk about, sort of a minute, mm -hmm. two minutes into the game. And now they have to reverse sweep. It's going to be, hey, well, going to be a big effort. I mean, again, it's it could be vitality. They've they've been in this position and they were happy with their results from that last bracket. Like, hey, wait, we know this. Now it's we lose. We're out. Let's let's do what we did last time. They might be in the zone. They've had the warm ups. Um, and, you know, if if one team's having a, an off day, that usually lasts all the time. And G1 hasn't been the, the most super convincing throughout the day. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's why I ended up on Vitality in my pick. This is uh, alongside Moist Esports and Sonics. Uh, Moist Esports is also on a match point. The other ones are going into game three. Just so you know. Well, thank you, Lee.
think this series, CJ G1 has, uh, they have not really been convincing. Seen a few mistakes here and there. Vitality on the other end has had multiple players step up. Size in scoring a key goal. Alpha digging that ball out to get the opportunities. And Radosin, I mean, you saw the goals he was putting in earlier today. <laughs> so Vitality has been a bit more convincing over the long haul so far. Uh, just for G1 as well, this match is so important. This is a the first round of the bracket. Loser here finishes out 9 to 12. And for G1, they finished top eight in the first regional. That's not in the top five, James. Well, it, it, it is sort of in the top five, I guess you could say, for the major points. But a, a 9 to 12 finish here puts a lot of pressure on that third regional if they want to make the major. Whereas Vitality, they've already got that top two in the books there and they're looking so they're certainly a lot more solid so this reverse sweep is everything right now for g1 if they do want to have their eyes set on san diego and i think vitality really has started to make a believer out of me with these performances for Dostin, trying to bounce that off the ceiling mark going for the corner boost steal but he got bodied off wasn't able to get it. Now we'll have to retreat all the way back, giving space now to Vitality. Alpha controlling, passing to Sizen, but Atomic had that play red. Great spacing there from Atomic, ready for the touch, and Sizen as well. The midfield game is strong from both sides, defending well. Alpha 54, James, he's been that man downfield, off the ceiling, pass for a dose and follow up. Oh. Mate, this could be an opportunity. Oh. And the miss coming out. G1 couldn't get it. Sizen puts it away, but. I feel like that could have been parried away, James. There was a little bit of a whiff coming out there. It's only couldn't get the touch. And yeah, Mark was trying to get this read off the backboard. It was perhaps worried about hitting it into Redosin to get the dunk and wasn't able to clear it out that far. But TJ, you, you look back at how that play developed and again, it, it's, it's Alpha 54 at the heart of it. He hit that ball straight up off the ceiling and made it as awkward as possible for G1. And again, they're just sort of letting Vitality attack. I'm, I'm not sure what the recipe right now for G1 is, James. We saw game one, they scored that early goal and quickly conceded three. We've seen them sort of have an early start. Atomic, is he disconnected? What has happened there? He is just driven straight past the ball, delayed flip. I'm not sure if it was lag and oh. disconnect, but he just pre-flip accidentally hit that jump button again. And that is devastating right now. He stopped moving. I feel like that's almost a disconnect, but we're back I into what the I mean, I think he was maybe trying to flip cancel into the ball. Didn't get the flip cancel. Oh. And just, you know, that that flipping forward motion just caused him to mess up. And it reminds me of that Alpha 54 back in the day on, on Barcelona, I think it might have been, that caused all the controversy. Did he disconnect? Did he control it? Because it was it was innocuous. It felt like that was just a touch that he was going to make every day of the week. But I mean, he's I think his his hands are a little bit too fast there for what was going on. And there's a 2-0 lead now. Vitality. I mean, they're just staring down the barrel of the sweep right now. And it looks like that sweep is is coming through. <laughs> Under two minutes left to go. G1. They scored that first goal. They've only managed to score a goal a well, game and. Verdosin putting in another one. Vitality kicking G1 when they're down. It's just not Atomic's day here. Gets a pinch off his own car with yeah, He had boost to get to that challenge as well. Just not his day at the moment. And a 3-0 lead here for Vitality. Well, perhaps not the, the blockbuster matchup we might have expected unless we kick off. I mean, it, it is but... kind of like blockbuster in that it is out of business. <laughs> But I, I mean, never mind. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> uh, he was certainly <laughs> struggling. <laughs> Alpha, the nice clear off the goal line. It seems like it's just a matter of time before Vitality closes this out. Oh, James, I love you so much. But here we are with a minute left. Vitality 3 0 up and. I mean, we're just looking for a response right now. We're looking for a change in perhaps play style, structure here from G1. We're not seeing it. Alpha 54, he's in the zone. Radosin, well, we know what he's been doing today. And Sizen, well, you know, there was a little bit of a side flip there, but I mean, they're all just, it's a well-oiled machine here, this Vitality lineup. 
and I, I regret uh, doubting them. They they have come out, and they have just looked like the better team. Mark Tosin almost getting another one, and Mark doesn't get the touch there. G1 defensively has not been on point. Even offensively, they're struggling to make plays. That is a really nice shot, but still, Alpha, how many saves have we seen him make today, CJ? Oh, I know, and for G1, James, it feels harsh to say it, but the defense has almost been comical, and we, we, we saw a little bit of that in the first regional. There was some strange own goals coming out from G1, marked by eight in particular, and it, 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 it's plaguing them here in this second regional as well. And there were a few times even uh, off ball and off director came, there were some team bumps as well. It had just felt like from almost the very beginning of the game that G1 couldn't get comfortable. Yeah, they, they just look flat as attack right now. Alpha 54 going to, uh, I don't, I don't want to say, it's not, it's not Alpha exactly the nail in the, the very end. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the nail in the coffin because that was a, a little bit of goal. I'm not sure what this is. This is sort of stomping on the grave uh, side. It looked like a little bit of extra dirt on the grave, CJ. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. It's, it's not too hot here for G1. They'll be going home, but Vitality, well, they didn't get the number one seed in the group. That was reserved for Liquid. They bounced back strong here in the first stage of the bracket, and we'll be seeing the top two team from last regional through to the top eight in this one. But Leaf, tell us something else is happening around the world apart from Blockbusters. Uh, sure, I mean, where do we start? Uh are we keeping it to Rocket League or do I have free reign? There's a uh, I would say let's stick to Rocket League. Definitely okay. Rocket League if we can. I don't want Johan yelling at us again. <laughs> it's uh well uh around the board here we we do have another match that has finished up. Moist is gonna grab their 3 0 sweep over top of Sonics. And then we will have two other matches that we'll be looking at in a second here. Team, uh, Team BDS and German Amigos. Uh, we have match point for German Amigos and Williams Resolve on match point over Saw, which is actually big. I, I thought uh, I thought Saw was w winning would actually be the upset, um, but it, it seems like in their matchups, I'm looking Saw as a winning record over these guys. Williams Resolve, uh, these are kind of ghosts uh, of their their past haunting them, and but it seems like they might be potentially overcoming them at a at a match point right now. So Williams Resolve. Uh, just need one more game win here to, to move on. So I think we will be moving in here. And yep, we got the Williams Resolved series yep. up. So an early goal. And what is it at? 2-1 two, uh, two in the series right this now is, in favor of Williams Resolve? Uh, this is 2-1 for Williams Resolve, correct. I like how they have the, the British flag colors as the color scheme for their entire overlay. Williams Resolve, <laughs> dedicated. <laughs> Yeah, just, just making a statement here in terms of that. <laughs> Even the boost has got the Union Jack. <laughs> the boost out one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all it's almost a little bit too obvious um, right now, but that's what's fun about these team streams though. It is oh, fun. I agree. You know, that personality different through. different overlays, different lineups and uh, I'd say these these round one matches are going reasonably as expected, um, depending on how much you uh, I guess value bds's current form james well, yeah, where, where did you have <laughs> um i i feel like bds is a bit of a wild card obviously monkey moon released his whole statement and was talking about his struggles and so you know it's it's going to be in europe is as a, a region in general is so difficult to consistently get results so mm -hmm. when i look at a team bds i think right now you would you would hedge your bets against them just from recent results, but you will never count them out. So it's, although it, it might not be surprising that they're struggling right here, you know that they have it within them to uh, to run the table if they're having a good day. Yeah, it, it, even in the first regional, I know it wasn't the, the overall result that they wanted, but they took down oxygen in the groups. Like this this team is still, you know, you, you're still seeing those signs of the, the world champion team from a few months ago, but... Um, they, they're just not quite winning the right games at the right times. And we also saw with, with mm -hmm. the Quadrant Series, they didn't quite get that one either. So, Well, we have a, a potential for German Amigos to take a 3-1 win here. Let's jump down to the field and hear how it goes. That's a, oh, that's a perfect slide over. So smooth and elegant. Kadir running through the field. And Ivan taps that up. 
Tox can't go because Catalyst was still in the rotation back. He's going to go the long way around. And Tox gets clobbered out of the sky. Now he needs to play defense. Psycho punts it wide. And BDS, they're having big issues when and they have to shoot on target. They just can't do it consistently enough. It's a slow clear, but he didn't have any booze. What do you expect out of him? Not just when they have to shoot on target. It's right now, every touch is a little bit too heavy handed from BDS. They're lacking the softness. They're lacking. Oh my god, ah! the precision! And there yeah. it is! Out yeah. of nowhere, Psycho shows the delicate judges that BDS is able to produce. Sure, BDS, they might have been in a bit of a slump, but Psycho is still Psycho. He's still the GOAT. To a certain extent, of course, because German Amigo. So there are the big dogs trying to keep these goats away. Team BDS, they have tied it up. There's still a chance here. German Amigos, just take a big breather. No need to rush things, no need to be upset. A 1-0 lead is never really gonna hold. Now we need to do it. Yeah, 1-0 against BDS is always gonna be a dangerous one. We know of the quality that BDS is bringing to the table. Monkey Moon though, that first touch, not too far away from him just yet, but Ivan is able to get on the end of it. With Tox now being last man back, has to stall for some time. Not a lot of boost in the tanks of German Amigos either, so this next defensive standard could be a dangerous one. German Amigos going up high into this. Tox? Oh, Tox. Can it beat Psycho? He does oh. get it off to the backboard, but that's no, no, an open net, Psycho. No, 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 he no, 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 doesn't no, no. have boost! He doesn't have boost! He's struggling! He can't Let's get go. there! German Amigos, they make sure that they've got connections with this Saudi Arabian government to deny any boost for Psycho. That's huge! That's huge. Catalyst got back to it, and we still go away with that uh, from that exchange with a with a dark eye, with a badly bruised eye, but with an attack I eye. I even oh no, that has to be it. Ivan has to bury that in the net. Monkey Moon now. For BDS trying to get it out. Tox holding the clasp, holding it very, very tightly. German Amigos now though. The offense broken and now the defensive stand up next. Tox pass into Catalyst. He can pick and choose his options. Des decides to ram it through. Extra with a whiff. That's high up into the 16. Monkey Moon only barely skates the touch. Psycho caught by Catalyst. He just waits for this time around. Another option that we didn't even oh, see. Pump. Another demo at 50. That's going to be over the top of Toxie lists uh, for Ivan. And he goes wide with it again. Extra skates the touch, but it does send it into the defensive pocket. And it's a race between Psycho and again, another race. Ivan can catch this one, though. The bounce not favoring Ivan, though. It's going to favor extra coming into it. With now Ivan, a lot of boost in his tank. A lot of control coming down from the ceiling. But Monkey Moon with a big clear. To save BDS from further hardship. Oh, I've, that's a beautiful. beautiful interception as well from Ivan into his own corner. Catalyst put down a, a lot of pressure though by extra. And now we have to watch another race to the ball. Who has the oh. read first? Psycho? Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, we're still talking about Psycho. Here. Yeah, Before true. got to get the read. But it did bounce very nicely. Like what you can often see is that that ball just slides on down instead because it slightly goes off the wall. But we've got an overtime and German Amigas are looking to punch their ticket into the next day, into the top eight. They've been dealt the bat hand, but they can still make it work. Just don't fall. Oh, no, 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 no. Extra is up. Extra is going for the bump. Extra finds oh. the bump. Is it in? No. Ah, Catalyst yes. the hero gets it out. And now it's the counter attack running. Ivan, pass one. Ivan. Can he get it past Monkey Moon yet again? No, he cannot. Monkey Moon recovers and goes back just quickly enough. It is a constant back and forth. It is no time uh -oh. to breathe for either teams. No mistakes allowed. This is overtime after all. Oh, but this might just be a mistake. Monkey Moon leaving hunting. an L and there oh, is an oh, open oh, play. <laughs> chugga, chugga, chugga. We're going to tomorrow, baby. We need Carmen Core in the quarterfinals, but what a goal to finish it off. Sometimes all you need is to do the unexpected. And oh, there it is. The German Amigos, uh, a bit of a slow start to the day and a, uh, a heavy finish to the end of it. So move themselves on to the quarterfinals. BDS still, James, in, in a bit of that rough period right now, getting knocked out early. Yeah, that, uh, that's pretty tough for BDS. I think uh, there's a good chance we will not be seeing them at the next major either, which is hard to believe yeah. after they were able to win the entire world championship and looked so good last year. But that is just a testament to how difficult and competitive Europe mm -hmm. really is.
yeah, and the, the whole world, I guess. It, it's hard to stay at the top. It's hard to keep that, not only the motivation, but I guess the work ethic as well. And there's certainly other real life factors that I guess Munkerman did highlight in his post as well. So we'll see what happens with this BDS team. So they can bounce back in the third regional. But for right now, Leaf, I'll tell you what, we've got yeah. some Williams results. Really Sar action. Yeah, this, uh, this matchup currently uh, in this season is... Uh, in favor of stuff, they're uh, two and zero oh in this uh, in this matchup between these two teams. So Williams Resolve trying to shut down some of their their past ghosts. Let's take a listen in and see if they can do it. Toxic up, Noah. What? You have to oh he did that intentionally. Goodness, I I didn't even see him there on the first pass. Like. I Oh, I thought it was a clean redirect from the, from the sidewall. And I was like, wait, that wasn't breezy. Is there a bug? But no, he's just come out of nowhere, in and out, into the redirect. That might be the best goal we've scored this season. That was sick. Uh, it, it, it's definitely the best goal just because that's intentional. You can even see Breezy does a backflip to try and direct that one in. Had Breezy just, you know, happened to get that goal? Sure, it's a cool goal, but it's like, you know, it's very circumstantial. That is very much one of those things where Breezy 100% intended every touch he made on the ball. And Nosaki trying to be intentional with his touches as well. Touch the backboard, though. Not going to be enough. And instead, it actually gets ricocheted all the way to the other end where Flame will have to make the save. We'll get a good first touch, but a bump Ooh. on the line almost causes problems, if not for Noah Goat. My goodness, Noah Saki stepping up here in game number five, and we need him to. Three minutes and 20 seconds left. Boost starvation becoming a problem again, but this time actually suck. Kind of struggling to keep this offensive pressure up without using their entire tank. Both teams resorting to physicality. Ooh. And that is just reducing the boost amount. Mike Boy's gotten past one, but Flame will shut down the angle. So dangerous in the air. The slow play not quite doing it. Oh, Noasaki almost trips up on the post. He manages to keep with it. Got 14 in the tank, zero now. The follow on, it's not on target. Though needs to deal with it. Flame with the read, but it's a one and done. The doink comes in from Breezy, but down the other end we go and dropping down is that ball. Breezy, oh, looking to take it underneath. Flame bumped off the ball. Noasaki's back somewhere, picks up the boost, scrambles for the save. It's the second half, Bass. We're up by one. We need to hold on, but again, like the game against Vitality, and I was right then. I hope I'm not right here. Now, it feels like we need more than the one goal. Yeah, I gotta agree with you on that. The good thing is, though, boost starvation not nearly as effective this time. We seem to be a little bit more in control, but our transitions downfield still got me a bit scared, especially with Mike Boy somehow getting a shot there. I'm not sure how we got the save. I'm not sure how we got the shot. I understand how we get that save. I'm a bit sad that it's a double commit, though, because it doesn't give us enough time to really grab any boost. But Mike Boy, my goodness, my friend, you don't need to go to the ceiling for that one. And unfortunately, it's taken away the entire offense that you guys just built up. And with a demo on the back line, now you got to scramble to try and find some sort of defense here. And a clearance out like that is going to do nothing but give it away to Flame. Flip reset over one, maybe over two. But if not for the save out of Tho, a pinch on the line come on son just let it go in no oh, no. oh he's just teed uh, up yeah. toxic who does put it soft and onto the crossbar breezy's gonna take it away but it's shut down immediately and though so good with the first touch able to follow for the second that's into a dangerous position but noah disallowing any attempt at net breezy just trying to get this one away but though will not relent he will not let us go across the midfield line without him taking a touch or even two and right now boost becoming prime real estate noah gets bumped off it he can't follow it up and though he seems to be everywhere he's the one who feels like is going to make it happen for Scythe. anyone is going to bass less than a minute remaining holding on by the skin of our teeth can williams resolve close this one out i am so nervous right now it just feels like the pressure is at an all-time high the weight on not just the shoulders of these players but everybody on this pitch right now and uh oh this could be a problem toxic in the corner kind of forces a double commit though though dry diving in on that one for reasons i can't really understand because it gives up their entire offense and now gives a chance to wr the other way breezy on the side ball can't get past toxic but at least wins the 50 50 and forces though into another awkward position a doink though that should get over noah saki can flame fill in the gaps indeed he can and 
a drop down pass will not work yes. out. Less than 10 to go. All we got to do is hold on. Mike Boy off the backboard gets a decent pinch, but a demo means there's no follow up here into the quarter. One last attempt, and it will be completely shut yes. down. To the ground it goes, and WR moving on to top eight. You love to see it. Well, if you weren't awake before that, you definitely <laughs> are now. That's some some energy. And again, Williams Resolve, finally, uh, getting that series, uh, that third series win away from Sa and making sure that that record doesn't continue for Sa. Gets the dub. Extra ecstatic, ecstaticism from uh, from the team as they move on into, into the quarterfinals of the, this playoff bracket that will be continued on tomorrow. We are done with our games today. So let's get a little bit of a wrap up. Let's see what, what happened throughout the day. We started off, of course, with our, our group stage here, where unfortunately we do have to eliminate one of the teams from that was Solary Tundra Endpoint and much delight in their respective groups were taken out. CJ, it, it started off with some stomps, then got really close in the middle there and some surprise mm. uh, group toppings uh, in in my opinion, at least, especially with that group B that everyone was saying was the group of death for this regional. And it, and it was the group of death, the only one where I guess the fourth place did pick up a win and we went to those head-to-head -head tiebreakers. Quadrant in the group of death of all teams topping that group, James. I feel like that that has to be the, the surprise well, right now, the group. Well, I mean, there, there was the series where it was literally last place if they <laughs> lost or first place if they won so i think the group of death really was accurate it was crazy how much pressure was on quadrant there and i think that uh that pressure really has uh, prepared them here for this final playoff bracket and and i think you know especially after seeing them get to the major last time and i actually got to to meet and speak with lando norris i'm a big quadrant fan i'm a i'm a sellout i know <laughs> we, we'd flex, i want James, i want quadrant flex. to do well that's really hey what well, uh, when you're when you're on the desk you can be as as one-sided as you want yeah. oh i know lee <laughs> <laughs> i've been doing this wrong well, i know <laughs> Did you He's not like, hear what i say about nrg every week <laughs> he was given the privilege oh, and know. he ran with it <laughs> He's like, yes, sir. All right, looking at the group, though. We just saw the beginning of it. That first round, it was best of fives. We did just complete it. Eliminated even more teams, CJ, as we move into those quarterfinals. Best of seven, so from there on out. Yeah, I, I think the round one probably went as expected. German Amigos, they got top four in regional one. They do take down BDS. So I think you could nearly say that was expected based on the first regional's results. And, I mean, now we get some absolute... Oh, let's call them some absolute doozies, James, for the quarterfinals. So I'm looking forward oh, to that. This, I mean, it's it's going to be juicy. I feel like mm -hmm. I have no disrespect to some of those teams in the bracket, but it, it does look positioned for an oxygen Carmine Court matchup in the semis, which is going to be juicy. I'm, ho I'm hoping for that personally as a fan. And we do look at now where things uh, wrap up up to this point as we have eliminated some teams. We're going to have some teams stuck at the points that they're at until uh, until they can get some more in, in future regionals. But right now, K Corp, not surprisingly, I would think, James, sitting at the top of the European region. Vitality having a fantastic bounce back so far, just to, in general in the region, um, as, a, as you do sit in second place right now. Yeah, and then also German Amigos just quietly racking up the points, uh, you know, still looking for a sponsor and what better advertisement than being top five <laughs> yeah, yeah, in yeah. the most difficult Rocket League region in the world. I mean, it, it's making a case now that we've got a locked top six in Europe because we're, we're getting the same top eight as last regional, except G1 go out. So set number seven C go out and Sonics go out and we're getting Quadrant and Williams resolve nine and 10. So we're swapping seven, eight and nine and 10 on the points. And that top six is just locked in in Europe right now. Yeah, of course, after this, it will start to get a little bit tighter for the, the race for those top spots for Land Diego. But here we are, schedule for tomorrow, in case you guys are wondering which match is going to be playing first. If you're particular on only watching one of your favorite teams here, you can find out Moist Liquid starting it off. K-Corp, Jordan Amigo is the last one there. That's, oh, yeah, you're right. We haven't, uh, we haven't seen that one in a bit, have we? No, straight away quarterfinal. So that's what we said. We're set up for some good matches here. And right away off the bat, I, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be the first series. Subject yeah, to change, maybe. 
but no, we we're, we're we were going to start in the middle with you know quadrant by the no yeah. Ooh, we're gonna start which the one's the middle? Worry. There's two there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do both at the same time. Why not? I don't know. Chaos. <laughs> let's throw it around. No, it will be moist versus Team Liquid as your first matchup. And I did mention again coming up soon as these points tighten up. Lan Diego on its way. You're going to have a very few chances here to get your tickets. Exclamation point tickets in chat to get that link to click on it or just head on over to Arl dot gg slash winter major tickets live to grab your tickets hang out watch some incredible rocket league and that it's coming so soon i mean i talked just before uh we could do this as our as our goodbyes here as our final thoughts as well guys but uh cj at the beginning of the show we, we realized with this weekend over we're halfway through the season now this this will mark the halfway point wow that is scary it, right it, because like it's, it's, it's it's February, so it just feels like we're, you know, second month of the year. It's only early, but really things are starting to tighten up in it. I guess it goes to show how important every single one of these games are. You know, you, you look at the first split and it's because it's it's the year before. You nearly think it's not as important, but all those points matter when we're looking towards the World Championship, which, James, at this point, it has to be on everyone's radar because we're, you know, we're, we're, we've, we're over the hill after this regional. I think you're exactly right, CJ. Now it really is the time where it feels appropriate to start looking ahead to just, you know, beyond the majors to start looking at that world championship picture and also understanding who's the favorites because last year coming off, you know, uh, such a dominant year from BDS, you're wondering, will this be the new team to take out? Are they, these are the the number one guys. They they have such a big target on their back, but now with the, the tough start that they've had this year, the race is wide open. And especially after the last major where you had Gen G come in and a lot of people were wondering, did Gen G just go to a weaker region and dump, run the table? No, they actually are that team. They won the major. So it, there's so many teams battling for this power that you really have no idea going into even the majors and looking ahead to the world championship. Who are the favorites? Who Who is the favorite? And it makes it all mu that more entertaining, in my opinion. The only way to find the answers out is to continue to tune in. Day two here for the European Cup continues on tomorrow. That's going to be at 1030 Eastern time for the pre-show 11 for kickoff. we got a whole good weekend of fun Rocket League. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you then.
though, and Kinsei sends one to the backboard, tries to send one to the back of the net, and he will triple, but you said the double might work out, how about a triple? Oh and my. This time. You can't be my 